you lost weight only to gain it right back after returning to your routine? Did your diet work for someone else but not you? Rockin' That ID Life helps you understand your genetic makeup to find a lifestyle that fits your needs. Together, you and RockinThatIDLife.com can focus on your health and meet your goals today. That's RockinThatIDLife.com. Centerize Brewery is a proud sponsor of Let's Go Blues Radio. Visit Center. CenterizeBrewery.com today to schedule a no-contact curbside pickup or make a reservation in their awesome tap room. That's Center Ice Brewery located in Midtown St. Louis. Let's go Blues! This is the St. Louis Blues Face-Off Show. Now, here's your hosts, Jeff Ponder and Mike Pepping. Hey, Blues fans, I like to consider myself a friend of the show. This is TSN analyst and former Blues netminder Jamie McLennan, and here's Kurt, Bill, and Jeff on Let's Go Blues Radio. Sorry to disappoint, Jamie. Uh, not exactly what you said there, but uh, welcome to Season 10, Episode 4 of Let's Go Blues Radio. This is the fully vaccinated, often imitated, but never duplicated, slightly mutilated. We are the original St. Louis Blues Hockey Podcast. Support for Let's Go Blues Radio is brought to you in part by RockinThatIDLife.com, the world's only truly personalized vitamin platform based on a health assessment of your DNA, and by Center Ice Brewery and CenterIceBrewery.com, St. Louis's first and only hockey-themed brewery. We're broadcasting live on Thursday, October 7th, 2021. This is franchise episode number 322 all time. I am Jeff Ponder. Bill Day and Kirk Price are on assignment. But I do have a special co-host tonight. He is a former Missouri State University Ice Bears netminder, <laughs> ACHA Division II National Select Team goalie. He's played all over the globe, including France, Switzerland, Germany, Italy, and Austria. Uh, he's also my former colleague and co-host for the KSDK Faceoff Show, as well as a former writer for KSDK.com and various other sites. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Pepping is in the house. Thanks for joining the show today, Mike. No idea how long that intro is going to last, but now I'm very <laughs> humbled. Thanks for having me. I feel great to be yeah. here. Yeah, well, I did my homework. I mean, I, I remember you telling me all those things, but I definitely had to do some internet search just to yeah. refresh myself. <laughs> I thought uh, where I chose to sit might have given it away a little bit. I started looking behind me like, what's behind me? I don't even know about. Is he reading off the wall? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, you've got your resume actually up on the wall. So that's why I was reading from. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you know, strategic over here. Just that's trying to right. help a buddy out. There you go. Good man. Good man right there. Uh, well, folks, uh, kick back, crack open a beer or a hydrate from rockin'thatidlife.com and enjoy some hockey talk for the foreseeable future. We're all over social media. So find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also find us on Discord. For more information there, check out letsgoblues.com slash Discord. We are dual live streaming right now on YouTube um, and Facebook, so please subscribe to our show if you haven't already and chat with us using the chat option in each platform if you're tuning in live. Uh, so, Mike, it is uh, – you and I still see each other at the Hockey Rink. We still talk, but um, – it's been a while since you've done something like this. Uh, hopefully you're not nervous because this show is nothing to get nervous about. Oh, no. Definitely not <laughs> nervous. Excited to be here. I'm glad to get back in the saddle a little bit. Talk a little yeah. puck, especially blues. Uh, you know, get excited. The season's about to start, although it's going to be a long, whatever it is, week, 10 days, whatever it is between this last game tomorrow and uh, and, what, the 17th? 16th when yeah i think it's 16th? uh 13 yeah. days 12 days something like days. that woof too long yeah i but agree I yeah that d doesn't it feel like that's a little i'll have to check past seasons but it feels like there's quite a huge delay between preseason and the regular season this year it does it's making me wonder too because we're gonna have a lot of questions we got to answer over this next uh well i guess 13 days but you know, without playing any more games, how are you really going to use that, have that measuring stick and figure out who's who's got the edge over others? Because, I mean, there's a probably more than a handful even of uh, people on the bubble. Yeah, 
Yeah, oh yeah, that's that's definitely true. Yeah, there's uh still one professional tryout uh with the team right now, which we'll get to, but <laughs> he's the real deal. I mean, what do you expect? He is the real deal. He's proven that right now. Uh yeah. but yeah, I mean there's uh yeah, there's a couple different uh surprises still on the roster. So uh definitely some things to figure out. They gotta get down by I think six more players uh by the time the regular season starts. So this one game might decide a lot. Uh, I think a lot of those guys are going to be bringing it tomorrow night. Absolutely. So, uh, Mike, uh, you know, we, we talk on this show all the time that, uh, well, Kurt and Bill are semi-retired uh, men's league players, but you're, I still play. I still play ice. I play roller. Uh, I know that every now and then on Wednesdays you're playing roller over at Queenie. Is that your oh, only yeah. hockey you're getting in now, or are you uh, part of another league? Oh, no. I always got to play at least a couple nights a week. Uh, well, I guess a max a couple nights a week, you know, yeah. marriage first. Oh, yeah. Parent life first. But <laughs> yep. um, it's a part of my life. It always has been. It's the most fun workout you can ever do. And, mm. and you know, it's just, in my opinion, it's like uh, so freeing, right? So uh, I definitely got to play. Even my mother-in-law noticed that about me by now. She was like, wow, I can tell that you you almost need it. It's like therapy. And I was like, yeah. You're right. So I always play a couple nights a week. So Queenie on Wednesdays with some high school buddies and some other buddies from ice actually now that are playing with us. Uh, and then uh, Sundays out at Maryville, I play ice uh, in a men's league out there with a actually random. Uh, I went to Umsel for one semester and turns out now we got lifelong friends out of it and it's a great time. That's awesome. Very cool. I, I actually played at Maryville for the first time uh, last week. Uh, pretty nice facility. We had yeah. a weird issue, though, and, and actually it was mentioned on this show because Kurt and Bill were recording while it was happening. Uh, it was a Maryville-Lindenwood game, and uh, and still some confusion as to what happened, but what I understand is that there was a fan in the stands that had pepper spray in his or her pocket, what? and it and it went off. It just like, I guess they were celebrating a goal or something, and it went off. Thought it was and the so, airborne. Yeah, right. Classic yes, exactly. mistake. I've been there myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, oh, what Jim. have I done? <laughs> this is the worst victory celebration ever. <laughs> yeah, so we uh we I show up and like people are starting to walk out of the arena. The game is like it's about eight minutes left on the clock, and it's still like they're they're just walking off the rink and fire department Did you walk shows up. The jet wash? Ah, I wish that would have been perfect. You wish, then you would have been in the pepper spray land. Well, that's true. That's 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 yeah. That's a that's a bad call on my part. But if you get your um, face on the news, more every now and lie. then, every now and then, though, a good pepper spray in the middle of you know, sometimes right? it's it's not so bad. Some people like smelling salts. We're a little <laughs> bit more hardcore. That's right, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we ended up having to actually play on the other rink. We we're supposed to play on the one when you walk into the right. So we had to play yep. at the left, but we still changed in the locker rooms on the right, and we were just hacking up along the whole time. It was awful. That's terrible. Yeah. But long uh, the, long walks too, man. Long walks and rinks. They're above. Oh yeah. For sure. Yep. That was definitely a long walk. Yes, they are. Yeah, it's not comfortable. On one walking team for that a while. Far. And their locker room was upstairs. And you know, I was a goalie, right? That and it wasn't even like extra wide stairs. Like we know we got goalies coming down these. It was literally like, hey, these are for normal people without skates. And I have big feet, so and pads, right? So that was a nightmare. Actually, it was like right when I was getting bone spurs too. I still have bone spurs on my ankle from around that oh, time. So it was a awful. really painful experience. Uh, twice a day, pretty much. So I only played on that team for a few months though. So was this at Maryville? Bad. Oh no, this was uh, out in Boston. South oh, okay. of Boston. I was going to uh, say, I'm like, man, I don't think they have locker rooms upstairs. But okay, that makes sense. Rockport, Rockport, Massachusetts. Hmm, Rockport. That sounds like a pretty happening yeah. town. Dude, super happening. Tons awesome. of great rinks in the area, too. Like Hockey Town, look it up. It's world famous. It's got rinks. It's one side of the one wall. It's, you know, the normal boards. And then they just have, like, plywood that's at a 45-degree angle and then concrete wall with a piece of tape all the way down where like the top of the glass is. Damn. But I've watched people like, I don't know how their kidneys didn't explode like <laughs> off some of these hits along that wall. And it's like, why is this a rink? Like, why is this open? That reminds me of the, the old great skate out in St. Charles. I don't know if you've ever played there, the roller right. rink, like those walls are literally concrete walls. And it's like, they have leagues there. And I'm like, yeah. 
how are people not dying from a hit every five minutes? Well, when they're <laughs> putting pepper spray on to warm up, they're probably good to go, dude. That's that's a good callback, man. You the you meth know how helps to... too. Yes, meth always. Helps. It is St. Charles, yes. right? It's okay. <laughs> Back I'm from St. Charles. I'm allowed to say that. It's okay. That's great. <laughs> from St. Charles, and I'm in South County, close to Jeffco. I'm allowed to make that joke. Um, so you know, let's move gamut. on. Let's move on to our official beers of episode number 322. You can follow each of the hosts of this show on the Untapped app. Uh, Kurt's at C Price 12. Myself, Jeff Ponder, can be found at J Ponder 94, and Bill Day is at Billy Blue Note 33. Um, not a sponsor of the show. We just love the untapped app. Uh, Mike, you ever heard of the untapped app before? I have, I don't have it though. I need to get it. It's need a good to download. One. I like it. Yeah. Good, good beer suggestions. And you know, it's like a, just social media for beer drinkers. Love it. Yeah. Profile uh, let's, let's start with our uh, guest host tonight, Mr. Pepping. What do you, uh, what do you got going on over there? Absolutely. So I have one of my favorites here, Schnickel Fritz, urban chestnut. Can't go wrong. I'm a German Hefeweizen guy, so uh, obviously also a St. Louis man. So uh, when the two combined, I thought it was a no-brainer, and it's super drinkable. Uh, just try not to have 16 because it's a wheat beer, you know. So one, it's heavy, lots of calories. Two, get real full. And three, you know, 16 beers. You'll have a hangover. Yep. I think uh, I think I told this story on the show before that I decided one night to actually get drunk off Urban Chestnut Schnickel Fritz. I was like, yeah, well, let's keep going. Keep them coming. Keep it flowing. And I felt great for like an hour. Then I felt like <laughs> my stomach was going to explode. Then yep. the next morning, that was one of the worst hangovers I've ever had. So yep. do not recommend. It's a great beer in moderation. Sip it. Yes. Yeah. And you got a space now. Like uh, who? Tapper? John Tapper? Turns out he knows his or Tapper? John? Whatever his last name is. Turns out he knows his stuff, you know? As yep. you get older, we can't do what we did in college and in high school and, you know, everywhere in between late 20s even maybe. But now we got to be crafty vets. We can't just yes. be seasoned vets. We got to be crafty. And in that case, not only drink craft beer, right? Because apparently I was totally going for a pun of duality. But <laughs> at the end of the day, <laughs> uh, really, I just meant you got you to gotta space your drinks. That's you right. got to have some water. That's true. Otherwise, you wake up and you still have normal shit to do. And at the end of the day, it just sucks worse to do it. So yep, I agree. No time for hangovers, man. That is who true. thought? Who would have thought we ever got to that point in our lives? Yeah, here we. I are. know it's crazy. In my twenties, I this never. Sign is a lie. <laughs> yeah, man, I never got home over in my twenties. I mean, late twenties it started about 27, yeah. 28. Oh, yeah. But man, like I remember when I was twenty five, I would not have a drop of water the entire day. I'd have Nor a Dr. Eat. Pepper in the afternoon. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> eat at night. I would just drink from Unless six o'clock like until like Jack in the Box. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, yeah, you're drunk food, and right. and now it's like, I man, if I did that now, I'd be hungover for four days. Exactly. It'd be like, well, <laughs> how many vacation days did I have, and how many do I have to spend now? Yep. And was exactly. it worth it? Yep. Maybe. Uh, I guess I'm you know? guess I'm taking vacation this whole week because I got drunk on <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> yeah, right. And normal drunk too. Like I didn't even like I was still in bed by twelve thirty. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, mine tonight is the uh, one I've had on the show many times that our friend Adam Cowgill will agree, who's the great bartender over at Center Ice Brewery. Tonight, I've oh, got yeah. the Beauty uh, IPA. Delicious. Always say the greatest IPA in all of St. Louis, and I definitely Agreed. I definitely stand by that. And I, I would even argue maybe even in the entire state. I, I don't want to make that claim because I haven't tried all the IPAs, but I feel like I've tried – a and shit a ton load. of the St. Louis Brewery IPAs, and I'm going to say beauty's the best. Yeah, I you know I have to agree. I'm not an IPA man, obviously. I'm just saying a wheat guy, but uh, Center Ice makes they don't make a bad beer, and no. the beauty is one of the like smoothest and most drinkable IPAs in my opinion. And, mm. and it's funny because I was wearing that shirt uh, last night. Otherwise, I might have ended up with it on today. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I've got. I don't that have the beauty. Great. I've I've got uh, I've got a couple oh, different dude, center ice it's ones. It's the can. You got to get it. Yeah, it's a good one. I've got the uh, the old arena lager one. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, that one's sick. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's a great logo. Uh, so a couple comments we'll get to here, and I just clicked off the Facebook comments because I'm an idiot. So let me uh, let me get back there. Okay. Adam Gold says hi, Jeff and Mike. Hello, Adam. 
Good to uh, hear from you, buddy. Uh, Mary Woodruff Ponder, who is my wonderful mother. She tunes in every week. She's kind of become a little guest here. Uh, She says, hi, Jeff. Hi, Mike. And I know you know my mom. Absolutely. Great to hear from you. Yep. Uh, Austin Lynch over in the YouTube chat says, I'm ready for hockey even more now since the Cardinals are done. And uh, yeah, Yeah. Austin, I'm with you 100%. Um, Tough loss last night, but that was... this. Yep, I worked there, so uh, it was a rough day at the office. <laughs> I bet, yeah, all baseball fans you work with, I bet. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's actually more people play more different sports than I thought they did before I worked there. Yeah, if that makes. Are sense. Are you the only hockey guy? No, actually, which is wow. interesting. That's awesome. Yeah, we're we're losing one though. Uh, he's going to. It's like a dream job for him. Basically, he's going to work for the Anaheim Ducks, and he's going to be a motion graphic artist. Holy but shit. But he just did normal graphics for us. So I was like, why the heck were we using you for motion graphics? Like, <laughs> he's got a job with the Ducks doing it. And apparently his brother lives out there, so he's going to be able to skate with him. So I was like, man, oh, that's dude, awesome. that is like your dream job. Yeah. That's so really cool. Kudos to him. Good for him. Yeah. Uh, well, you want to go ahead and say, since you're so open about it, where do you work, Mike? I work at Rawlings. So yeah, best out in baseball company in the world. Yep. Yep. If you... Uh, if you own a Wilson glove, I apologize, but there's, you know, there's always time to fix it, <laughs> especially in a 2000. Woof. Let's not get into the pleather. Oh, I said it. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, but that's okay. Put we love on, Wilson. We love Wilson on let's go blue radio. I'm kidding. We don't, we, we're all wrong. <laughs> well, we might, well, Fucking obviously a. I'm biased. If I yeah, wasn't you're... like, well, I've, uh, you know, I, I've definitely, when I play it, I always used to have a Rawlings glove. So I'll say I'm a little more partial to Rawlings, Rawlings as guy. well. Yep. I do admit though, you know, I'm all, I'm also an honest guy. So I tell people at the office, uh, you know, definitely didn't have the bat or the cleats at an Easton bat, but now it's okay to say, cause we also, uh, we now Easton's under us. So, you know, we can talk about Easton bats now. So that's okay. Oh, but good. The cleats yeah, were well... definitely Mizuno, not the best, you know. Don't want to bring that up too much at the office, but they accept no. it because I don't even think we made cleats at the time. Well, there you go. Once again, you know, we're old. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, again, we, we uh, for anybody who maybe not has maybe doesn't remember Mike or hasn't heard the name or maybe in a while, whatever. Uh, Mike uh, and I used to do. And as you saw in the open there, if you're watching the live show, um, we used to do a show, uh, KSDK face off show. Which they ended up bringing back, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. With yeah. uh, I think it was Hannah Ray Yates and um, Cam Jansen, actually. Yeah. Uh, same show. They used a lot of the similar graphics. Uh, so, but but we're the OGs over here. We are the OGs. That's right. And shout out to Jordan for bringing us together. That's right, Jordan Palmer, Great guy. Uh, friend of the show. I've I've actually uh, plugged his. Well, he used to do some work for drink a company out here, drinking beer. Yeah, uh, drink yeah. Uh, drink three one four, right? Yeah, yeah. Connoisseur, so, very much a taking, connoisseur. Taking beer drinking in St. Louis very serious. I mean, he really is a connoisseur now. He's almost a uh, what's the wine like sommelier? Mm-hmm. He's almost like He's a one beer of those sommelier. Guys. Yeah, yeah, he is a beer sommelier. Um, so again, uh, and, and so, yeah, Mike and I covered the team, uh, right in the middle of their rise. Um, so I, I covered them a little in 2012, but you and me took over in somewhere in what, 2014, 2015, did a lot of the work for KSDK and actually had a web show for KSDK on their sports page. Um, we were there for the Ryan Miller trade. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Woof. That debacle. Yeah. Yeah, That also though, the, Number one, and this is all-time favorite Blues fan experience, and we were in the press. We were actually working, you know? And so we couldn't even enjoy it like we should have been able to, but was the Hawks game seven with the Brower. Yep. The two whiffs and then finally makes it in on the goal line the whole time. Like, dude, that building, even the Winter Classic didn't touch that. Yeah, like, dude, that that place erupted, went nuts. Oh, my gosh, it was nuts. And that that was the one time, though, where, like, the whole press box also was kind of there. Like we yep. did, we sell it more than normal. Let's be. Oh honest. yeah. But, yeah. There was at least at the very least you saw a couple fist bumps, you know, like, Oh, oh no, dude, you we know, were in the air. Do you yeah, not remember? Right. We were in the air. That was oh, the first. Yeah. Cause like we, I remember I looked at you and I was like, what? And then you kind of looked back and I was like, Oh no, we're good. Cause then I saw <laughs> past you. And like, I think even Lou and, um, 
Tom were like standing up and like high five. And I was like, all right, we're good. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. We're good. We're okay. (laughs) Well, I mean, shit, that was, that was the first big hurdle the blues really had. I mean, they, they could not get past that first round. And when they did, they were swept. So it was a and huge after the deal OT, to beat the Blackhawks. Patty Kane BS the night before or the game before, you know, it was like, here we oh, go yeah. again, right? Yep, so, yeah, exactly. to have that happen, Brower and X-Hawk, like, whew. Yeah, that was beautiful. I remember he said after the game something about uh, if he wouldn't have scored that, he would have uh, just retired right there. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was like, I think we might have even said the same thing, like, after he scored <laughs> that, you know, because the game was, no, that wasn't an overtime or anything, right? It was, like, late in the third. Or, no, it was actually probably with, like, halfway through the third i think it was like halfway. Through i remember the third. like i was like who there is too much time left like this is not yep. good yeah because you know we're blues fans lifelong blues fans so yeah we we, we know get it. all about get, giving back a lead yep oh yeah for sure that's what this team's best at <laughs> so to it. speaking of uh some blues history let's talk about today in blues history courtesy of the at stl blues history account uh and this is for i have the wrong date on our outline but Uh, This is for October 7th, and of course, this is the year 2021. Uh, 1967, on this day, St. Louis uh, Louis Blues play their first game. It was an exhibition game at the St. Louis Arena in a 3-3 tie versus the L.A. Kings. Uh, Same day, they named Al Arbor the first captain in team history. Jimmy Roberts, Noel Picard, and Ron Stewart were all named alternates. And uh, if you want to check it out, Uh, Some pretty cool photographs that were shared by uh, Mr. STL Blues History. Um, He's got the box score from the game. He's got, uh, looks like, what is that, a ticket, I guess, for the game. Um, And then, of course, newspaper clipping. um, And then, I guess, like a flyer for, you know, hey, come and buy. Which, by the way, tickets for this game. Tickets. Tickets. $250 to $6. My goodness. I'll take on the glass for six dollars, please. Yeah. Uh I'll can I just get the and entire what, or beers a quarter then? Yeah, Maybe right. 25. Yep. Like speaking I'll... of hangovers. Can I take every row A? Like I'll just take every seat <laughs> in row A and then I'll just switch every stoppage. Dude, yeah. <laughs> just multiply. How many yeah. seats are there? How long's the game? How many times do or how yep. often do I have to move seats? Yep. There you go. I th- that's what I would have done. A beer Man. for every seat, too, right? That's only fair. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, just go ahead and bring, like, a beer every every 10 minutes to each seat. Just go ahead. Right. I'll, I'll, don't worry. They'll yeah. get they'll get drinking. Don't worry. Yeah. And, I mean, back then, you could be like, if it's leftover, you can have it. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, go ahead. Help yeah. yourself. Uh, back when Adam AB probably didn't even have limits on what their employees took home. That's right. Uh, Adam Gold in the Facebook chat says, I was there for a Brower goal, and it was the biggest live goal I've ever seen. It was like slow oh, yeah. motion, two whiffs, and he had time to knock it in. Wow. It was about 10 minutes in third, and Blackhawks scared us earlier hitting the post. That's right. Yep. Wasn't that was yep. that Patrick Sharp that hit the post? I don't remember who hit the post, but I remember it happening. I remember they had a couple chances that were kind of close. Yep. Yeah, a reminder of the uh, 2019 Dallas Game 7 when uh, – yeah. Ben almost had the wrap around. There was another chance. Somebody hit the post and, you know, it was just yeah, destiny. Uh, or somebody. Yep. Yeah, somebody. Yep. That was. I know. And then, but then, you know, Thomas hit the post. Like, and luckily Patty was following it up. But, like, yep. that was another one where it was like, are you kidding me? But then when yeah. you saw it, like, land behind Bish, you're like, oh, oh. Yep. Patty had yep. position. And then, you know, yep. the rest is history, literally. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, so October 7th, 1989, uh, St. Louis Blues dedicated the 89-90 season to Dan Kelly prior to their home opener cover and inside cover of the 1989 St. Louis Blues media guide that honored Dan Kelly was also included in the tweet. So I recommend you go over and check that out. It's pretty cool to see that kind of old timey stuff. Uh, also on this day, uh, the first gathering of the Blues alumni was held, organized and put together by former trainer Norm Mackey. The alumni group has generated generated a lot of money over the years for charity. So really, honestly, a big day in St. Louis uh, yeah. for that alumni association to get together uh, for their first gathering because that the alumni association has been a huge part of growing the game out here. We talk all the oh, time absolutely. about how the, the alumni stick around, they coach the leagues around here, they 
you know, we're talking about Logan Brown being on this team, Jeff Brown's kid. You know, I mean, it's so much hockey has come from that alumni association, one of the best in the NHL. Absolutely. I mean, St. Louis is a hockey hotbed now. And it, I mean, we kind of came up with the phrase as it was happening in real time and now it's been realized, but we are the heartland of hockey, right? That's and right. It came from uh, pioneers and, you know, Cam was one of the first breakthrough, Jan Stasny. Um, and then it just kept trickling and the trickle became a river, which is now a pretty good, or a stream, which is now a pretty good river. So um, yep. it's just awesome to be a part of the story, to be honest. And uh, it's great to see the notoriety now because, you know, when we were growing up, it was very rare to have mm -hmm. any hockey player even make uh, junior A um, in the NA, not even the USHL, um, just the North American League, um, which was always considered like slightly, you know, lower in terms of overall prospecting and play. Uh, but it was and you know, D1, like there was only a couple Mike McKenna, obviously, and, and he had an, an amazing career. Uh, also lefty goalie. So. Got to give shout outs to my gotta love lefty goalies. Parkway South as well. High school. Got to give shout out to the high school lefty goalies, you know. Uh, and I'll, but, I'll, I'll add with Mike McKenna, friend of the show. We've had him on before. Friend of the he's, show. he's a lot of fun. Good dude. You know, you know Mike, right? Absolutely. You, you've uh, played yeah. against him, worked with him, played with him. Yep. Yeah. Uh, didn't play with him. Uh, too old and was way too good by the time. Like I was a late bloomer <laughs> too. So I got good later in my career um, and then right. rode that way for a little bit. But, uh, yeah, Mike was a little older, but I did work with him at Johnny Max for a few months, which was funny. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I remember you telling yeah. me that. I knew that there was a connection with you and him other than just being lefty goalies. Yep, and uh, his dad is the reason this tooth looks normal, so also <laughs> yes. a connection there. His dad's office is a part of my mouth permanently. <laughs> <laughs> that's good to hear. Good. He, yeah, he does good work. He's out in Baldwin, I believe. So Absolutely, great work. he is. Yeah. Right off Manchester. Great job. Yep. And the reason it job. happened, I uh, got a high stick right when I started playing out. So I was a goalie in college for listeners that don't know. Um, have been playing out since I graduated, which is 11 years now. Uh, time flies. So my hair is all gray. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I, uh, I got a high stick and looked like a full Lloyd Christmas, man. Uh, I should have showed told, <laughs> if I knew this was going to come up, I would have sent you the picture so you could put it up. Um, and my wife said, I'm not going to talk to you till you get that fixed. And so <laughs> the next day at work, I had a phone job at the time too. So the next day at work, I'm like whistling when I don't mean to. And I was like, oh man, I got, I really do have to get this fixed. Mm -hmm. So I happened to work, uh, right behind the, uh, the pair movie theater off Manchester. Okay. And so I just called a bunch of dentists in the area and he had an opening and then I didn't even know, I didn't even associate or even really notice the name. I don't think so. I'm just calling dentists and I get in, I was like McKenna. And then his mom starts talking about it her son plays hockey because his mom was the receptionist. Oh, and okay. I was like, like, wait, your son is Mike McKenna? I was like, oh my gosh. And then I thought, this was a God thing because this is the perfect place to get my tooth fixed. Like, yeah. Right. I had no yeah. idea. I just they yeah, had he's... an opening the same day, walked in, and he's probably done this a million times. So he got it all fixed. Dude, it took him like 45 minutes. I was out of there. Got and my wife, yeah, and, you know, I my mean, wife started talking to me again, and then we had kids, so it was good. We we all know that uh he has he has seen tooth uh issues from hockey before so oh yeah yes that still does <laughs> too because i know he still skates sometime i'm pretty sure he oh still yeah skate, skates sometime yeah when i that's when a, i had a, a rich hockey history when i when i had a uh a, a, a tooth that i needed uh to get capped because i i got a, a same similar got a hockey injury from it and uh the first thing everybody said was go see mike mckenna's dad you know that's what everyone yep. in st louis says that guy knows what he's doing go see him <laughs> absolutely i can vouch it, yep. that, that was like uh that was probably like eight years ago mm -hmm. yep. still going strong what he told me was you can even go eat chicken wings in 10 minutes if you want and i went, that's amazing well, that sounds good you know that's yeah. confident i so think i, like I will <laughs> yeah right and i may have i don't know yeah chicken wings are pretty <laughs> part of my diet so it's hard to remember when right <laughs> uh october 7th 1993 brendan shanahan recorded his third, wings. his third career uh doesn't say what that is. I'm oh okay. Third career hat trick. Hat trick right? yeah. Yep, yep. And this is uh this is directly from Mr. STL Blues history. So fix your shit, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. Uh hey, third career hat trick. To me. It's St. Louis Blues. Uh they had a five three win versus the Florida Panthers in the season opening win. First and only blues hat trick on opening night. 
Uh, in the same game, Brett Hall was hospitalized due to an injured spleen, spleen suffered during the game, which I I feel like I should remember that, but I, I was only, what, eight years old? Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Huh. I only remember it, though, because, like, to me, a like I thought it was a ruptured spleen, and I was, you know, how old was I? Eight? Um, yeah. So I was thinking we just lost our you know top star and we still aren't even going far in the playoffs as is so i got really worried about like the whole blues organization i was like are we still gonna have a team after this you know because i was like yep. the whole world is ending um especially <laughs> you know uh well i guess that was a pretty big fan of shanny at the time though so i thought maybe he could carry us a little bit but uh you know nobody can replace hull and nobody ever will no that's why no, he's nobody ever will yep uh, October 7th, 2017, number four, Noel Picard and family were honored by the St. Louis Blues. Uh, there's a clip that uh, STL Blues history included. His son, Dan, is in that clip. And then also number four, Boom Boom Gunnarsson scored the first goal of the game and his first goal in 62 games. So, uh, yeah, number number four had a big night there in number uh, in, in 2017. Yeah, I know. It's funny when stuff works out that way. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then uh, 2019, Jordan Bennington was credited with his first NHL assist on a goal scored by Oscar Sundquist. Alex Petrangelo also recorded his 400th point and 23rd game winner, passing Al McKinnis for most by a Blues defenseman in a 3-2 win versus the Toronto Maple Leafs. I do remember that one. Hi. Uh, I feel Maybe. like I remember the assist from Bennington, but I don't remember, you know, Petro scoring his 400th point and uh, passing Al McKinnis. I mean, I remember he passed him, but I don't remember exactly when, uh, especially against the Leafs. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I was doing on October 7, 2019, but it might have been parenting or drinking. I'm, <laughs> I was going to say parenting, drinking, and playing hockey. That's It's probably yeah. one of those three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now you got to be interested uh, to see what day of the week it was. Oh, that's a good call. Let's figure that out. Uh, yeah, while you it. do that, I will uh, go ahead and say a happy 65th birthday to ex-captain and ex-coach Brian Sutter. He is the uh, longest-serving St. Louis Blues captain and, uh, again, former head coach, born on October 7th, 1956. So, Brian, I know you're listening. Happy birthday, Brian Sutter. Happy birthday. <laughs> you did it. You did sixty-five. <laughs> uh, you find out what and day of the week Monday. that was yet? It was a Monday. It was a Monday. Yeah. So it was definitely parenting and probably maybe slightly hungover. Uh that's a good bet. I I'm I'm gonna say I was doing the exact same thing. Especially uh, if I play hockey on Sundays, you know? I was gonna say gonna I, I hockey, at that time I was playing I was playing Sundays and Mondays. So there's a good chance that I was hungover oh, and I had a you game. Were so Yep. <laughs> you were loving life. Uh -huh, you definitely yeah. got a hat trick. That's you, right. <laughs> That's you, uh, right. You joined the Brendan Shanahan Club. I'll do it. That sounds awesome to me. Well, uh, folks, we're going to take a little break here and uh, hear from our friends over at rockin'thatidlife.com. But when we come back, We'll be talking about uh, Blues preseason and everything that's uh, that's come out from the Blues here in the last couple days. It's safe to say that the burn box from rockin'thatidlife.com provides you this with the is sugar, the St. Louis Blues face-off show. Mood, now, here's your host, focus, Jeff Ponder and Mike Pepe. Experience. Not only get the excellent product. Okay, wait, what is happening here? <laughs> <laughs> it's playing two videos. Uh, hang did on, Let, let's. That? I did not. That is not planned. Let's try this again. It's safe to say that the burn box from rockin'thatidlife.com provides you with the sugar bustinest, muscle buildingest, mood enhancingest, focus inducingest, energy boostingest experience. You not only get the excellent product, but you get recipes, menu options, a tracker, and program guide to assist you along your self betterment journey. Based on your goals, you can double up on Slim Plus or Energy, or you can get one of each with flavors such as mixed berry, tropical fruit, and orange. 
The Burn Box lets you enjoy the weight loss or muscle gain journey along the way. Become a VIP with RockinThatIDLife.com and place your Burn Box on subscription and you'll save 20%. And as always, text the roughest, toughest He-Man stuff as Tom Bray has ever crossed a Rio Grande. And our friend Dustin at 636-393-8745 and tell him Let's Go Blues Radio sent you to receive an additional 10% off your order. And all of you skunks clear out of here. And go over to rockinthatidlife.com. Well, that was much better. Uh, yes. Don't know what happened that first. You heard that, right? Am I, I'm not going crazy. Absolutely. I thought okay. it was great. It was our face up feeling true again. <laughs> I have no I idea. You planned That's, it. I was like, just that is, n- that has never happened before. That's a first. So yeah, congratulations. Well, there's a reason. You were a part of it. You're welcome. <laughs> Lightning strikes. Just the tip. That's right. That's right. Just the tip. Just see how it feels. Uh, so NHL has announced that the winter classic will actually begin at 6 PM on January 1st. Uh, tickets went on sale last week, but, uh, kind of a later start. Um, I know that they had to do yeah. that a couple of years ago. Uh, was it Pittsburgh and Washington because the sunshine was so bad that they had to push yep. it tonight. They've had to but, do it, uh, a, I think a couple of times at least. Yeah, they probably have. Uh, but I remember that one particularly, uh, kind of, cr- it's, it's kind of weird though, to see that, uh, that they've already announced like, Hey, we're going to do, a- I-, I don't know. Maybe there, is there a bowl game? Maybe that day that they didn't want to compete with, or I don't Probably. know. That's a good yeah. bet. I was thinking, you know, uh, well, one temperature wise, it's definitely going to be ideal up in Minnesota, but it might be fine during the day as long as it's not direct sunlight. Um, right. but two, I mean, I appreciate a later start on New Year's day. You know, oh, again, me too. talking about enjoying some beverages. Uh, uh-huh. well, what's the best time of year to do that? <laughs> you know, so yep. um, I remember some of the first ones I missed because we were young and still in college and living the life. Right. And so sometimes you wake up after it's like halfway done already. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and you say, well, at least I enjoyed last night. That's and right. You, crack a beer <laughs> and, you know, partake in whatever you used to do back in college because we all had our things. <laughs> yep. And then you went on with your day and then, you know, sometimes you forget the whole game because that turns into another drinking day. But yep, exactly. Yeah, there was uh, I I, I can't remember which game it was. I want to say it was Boston, Philadelphia, which was like 2013, maybe Um, was like it was like the first year. I remember I watched the whole game and it was like third period. I remember looking at my wife and just going, I think this is the first Winter Classic I've actually watched the whole thing. And she's like, why? And I'm like, because I'm usually super hungover. But my son was like not even one years old yet. So like we we didn't do anything that night. And I was like, this is crazy. I'm actually watching the whole game. Like it blew my mind that the Winter Classic had been around since 2006. And I hadn't watched a whole one yet. (laughs) Well, you know, that'll happen. That happens when you have a Super Bowl. I can't tell you who played and who won for, uh, well, you know, more recently, obviously I can't, but definitely through the college years. Nope. No idea. You know, what was funny was that I'm, I'm a Packers fan. And, um, somebody asked me a a little while ago, when was the last time the Packers won the the Super Bowl? And I said, well, I know I was in college. That's about it. Because (laughs) I remember getting very, very drunk in celebration and just not remembering at all. Like, any time of, I don't know, any, any like a concept of time did not exist when I was in college. Right. Right. No, no. I mean, it didn't need to again, like right now I'm like, Oh, it's 10 PM almost. But in college I would have been like, so Jack in the box in one or two hours. <laughs> right. Like when am I going to be ideally hungry and ideally drunk? Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Ah, to be young. Uh, so the, uh, talking about the blues preseason and training camp, uh, they have assigned multiple players to AHL Springfield and various junior clubs. We'll run through a couple of them here real quick on Saturday. They assigned forwards, Tanner Kaspik, Matthias Lafrier, La- Laf- I can never say that guy's name. Lafferty, Dude, yeah. Lafferty, Daniel, um, Lafferty Daniel. <laughs> you know where that's from? I can, I can yeah, see the wheels turning. From. Come on. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, Hugh McGing, Matthew Pekka, Nolan Stevens, Nathan Todd, Alexei uh, Toropchenko, and Keen Washkaruk, as well as defenseman Griffin Luch and uh, Josh Wesley to AHL Springfield. Also forward Zach Bulduke, defenseman Tyson Galloway, and goaltender Will Cranley 
all returned to their junior teams. And then on Sunday, they assigned goaltender Joel Hofer and then defenseman Tommy Cross and Tyler Tucker to Springfield. And lastly, this morning, they assigned forwards Nikita Alexandrov, Sam Onis, as he goes by, but we all love to call right. him something I else. <laughs> and uh, Nathan Walker, as well as defenseman Callie Rosen and Steven Santini, as well as goaltender Charlie Lindgren to the AHL. Uh, Onis, Lindgren, Rosen, Santini, and Walker all have to uh, clear waivers, which I don't think will be an issue, but we'll see. Uh, they also released Michael Froelich from his professional tryout today. So roster starting to shake up or shape up. Um, the Blues uh, now have uh, 29 players on the roster. And again, they have to get to 23 before the season starts next Saturday. Did you uh, see anything from these guys? Any any surprises in, in what I just listed off? Anything that you're like, what? I mean, I for me, none, but, but none. maybe you have yeah. somebody. No. So, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts about a lot of these guys, but we sure. listed a lot of names, right? So, Let's hear it. Um, well, I think that most of them, obviously, I'm not surprised by any of this. Um, most of them, though, are are kind of on their way out, in my opinion, in terms of uh, high end, regular, long term blues. At the end of the day, right? So, like Caspic, um, Pekka, obviously, Stevens, even though you know, and he's still on the tipping point, but I think he's going the way of uh, well, the pasture. <laughs> um, yeah. Nathan Todd, uh, Toro Pachenko. Um, you know, these guys, I, I just, they're going to form out the core of, uh, the Thunderbirds, right? That's the Springfield name. Yeah. Thunderbirds. Yep. Yeah. They're going to form the core there. Um, they have an opportunity to crack the club, but the problem is like, they were kind of higher, t higher touted prospect. I mean, Matthew Pekka was a low pick, then he had a couple good years. Right. And I mean, he's just kind of going by the wayside. He had some behavior issues, I think uh, a few years back. So like, he's just there. He's a good vet presence. But like Nolan Stevens, Toro Pachenko, um, Kaspik, like these guys, like you, you thought, okay, they may mature into something. And then, I mean, part of it is how they've been used. And that's always going to be a part of it with any team and any organization. But it's up to the player at the end of the day, um, do the right things, put in the effort and find ways to get the results on the ice. You know, sometimes it still doesn't happen, but um, it is what it is at that point. And you know, you've, you've left it all out on the ice. So um, I just think those guys are going to they're going to be more AHL mainstays at this point than ever being um, a true like difference maker, probably on the Blues squad. But then you still have some like Matthias, uh, you know, we'll call him L. <laughs> uh, <laughs> La Ferriere. La Ferriere. Yeah, that La, sounds right. La, 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 I think it's Lafferty. I'm not saying it again. Lafferty Daniel. That's what I'm going with. Yeah, Lafferty Daniel. Um, <laughs> would you get out of my way so I can drive? <laughs> um, where like, you know, then, were I you get, on that one dipshit <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> sorry oh, continue <laughs> oh you're good i just i want to see that movie now um <laughs> so anyway the uh the forwards like you know or not the forwards the the players assigned to juniors and their junior teams like those also aren't a surprise but there are like all of them I have high upside at this point. So then it becomes, are they going to become the next Stevens, the next Torpachenkos, you know, or are they going to break out and become maybe more of, well, hopefully at least a Clem Costin, but, uh, a, well, not a Cairo level, but I'm talking about in terms of development or a Fabry even before, you know, everybody realized he was made of glass, but it's the only reason we got to draft him in the first place. So whatever, anybody was going to take that bet at that pick. Um, yep. Oh yeah, you know, for sure. and we actually covered that draft. So we've talked about that a lot over the years. But we uh, did anyway. No, the, that's. The, uh, the, oh, I I was going to add. I agree, hundred um, percent. You know, there there's not any surprise to me. The bigger surprises are when guys are are hanging around and still getting a look. Um, yep. We we got a couple here that are still sticking around. One like Jake Neighbors, who you know, yep. obviously he's a high pick for the Blues, but. He's this is one of the last rounds of cuts and he's still uh, finding a way. And, and we just saw him in one of the preseason games uh, getting top line minutes. Um, they're clearly interested in him. And I think that's a guy that we'll see with the club probably 
maybe not. I don't know if we'll see him as a as a, a, a stay for the start of the season, but I think we'll see him as a call up at least. Uh, I think next year he's eligible for the AHL. Um, so after that, we'll see that. But you know, uh, to me, it's more of a surprise when guys are still sticking around. Uh, a right. lot of these guys, you know, ninety percent of what you draft are either going to be playing in the AHL or ECHL, or you're going to have out of your organization within four or five years of the draft. So um, unfortunately that's just how it works. There's only so many spots in the NHL and um, you know, there's a couple guys that I see, you know, Joel Hofer. I, I saw him play live uh, this, this past, uh, uh, let's see, last Monday against the stars. Yeah. And, and I thought game. you, what's that? Shay's first game. Shay's. Yeah. My son's first game. Yeah. And he was, uh, he was, he was very exciting to watch. I think he's got a career ahead of him. Uh, another guy, Tyler Tucker, who we've talked about on this show, you know, maybe he finds his way back up to the NHL, but, um, really none of these are a surprise to me. Um, guy that, that, that kind of is, I think is on his way out is Nikita Alexandrov. Uh, he's a guy, I think when they drafted him, they were very excited about his skill set, but Nothing has really seemed to pan out with him so far. I could see him probably being uh, going back to Russia here in the next uh, year or two because I just, I don't know. I, unless the Blues trade him and so, he gets a chance somewhere else, I just don't see him coming up with the club. I agree. Fun fact about him, though. Uh, I actually, you know, I'd heard the name and I wanted to, I was trying to remember who he was. So I hockey D beat him earlier. Uh, he was born in Germany because that last name screams Germany. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally screams German. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, German. I added the Y. My B. <laughs> uh, Ken Morris in the YouTube chat says, "What are the chances Nathan Walker will be in the NHL?" Love that little Aussie. Uh, I I love or Nathan Walker as well. Um, yeah, we, I, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, we we saw him fight Adam Beckman uh, last night, and he landed Absolutely. some bombs, which were yeah, awesome. he did. Especially Man. for his size, I was like, okay, all right. Yeah. Somebody's he's making got a name. Some, he's a feisty little dude, like a little third yeah. flurry out there. Yeah, and he's uh, got some skill. But unfortunately, I mean, I don't th I think he'll be called up at least once. Um, yeah. I don't think he'll be long term. And it's more of a, well, we don't have a lot of some room. I mean, look at all these guys um, that are on the bubble. Logan Brown, Dakota Joshua, obviously great story and showed some promise last year, but again, he's definitely going to be an odd man out in my opinion. Clem Costin, yeah. I think deserves to crack the roster, but does he? I mean, I wonder how he is in the room um, because they've been so hesitant to bring him up and give him a, a longer term look. Uh, yeah. McEachern, I think might be an odd man out. James Neal, you know, the real deal. We talked about him off the hop, but um, he's obviously, if he can be the real deal, uh, like he was in Pittsburgh, uh, he's going to have some supporting cast to help him out. But uh, is he an issue in the locker room? Again, I think he has had some some bad vibes that have been uh, kind of strewn about the room on other teams. So uh, would we take a chance on him or not? And then neighbors, like you said, he has had an incredible camp. Like almost half the scoring plays, I feel, in every one of our games that he's played in, he's involved in. Like he's making things happen, even if it doesn't show up on the score sheet. I've seen it, right? So does he push, and do we give him the nine games and send him back to juniors, right? It's his last year, I think. Yeah, um, if yeah. not, you know, he does he fit and does he float? And then Peronovic, obviously, uh, people know he's coming. He's going to be a force. Uh, how big, we don't know yet, but the upside is huge, right? So um, I, with all that said, I know he's a defenseman to overall numbers, right? Um, I just don't see where Walker fits in. And and I do see him as a call-up, especially with injuries. You know, hockey happens, right? So yeah. um, it, we'll just see. But at the end of the day, you know, I just uh, – with his size and – I actually, I can't remember what position he is, but, um, you know, that can make a difference left, as well. Left wing, I believe. Okay. So that does help. Yep. That helps him a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, we could, we could see a positional call up. We could see a call up due to injury, but, um, unfortunately with the blues, at least I don't see him ever getting a, a regular spot at this point. No. Um, I think if he were to go to a lesser team, like, uh, if you were involved in the trade to send him to Ottawa, I could see him getting a regular spot, but, um, yeah, I think he's one of your first call-ups at forward. He's a guy that you could plug in pretty much anywhere in the lineup, uh, except maybe your first line, but you could even throw him on the second line, and I think he's 
he's a guy that still has skill enough. Uh, you know, the hands are there, the speeds there. It's just, you know, all the fundamentals just aren't there for him to be a full-time NHL player, unfortunately, but I'm, I'm actually with you, Ken. Um, I love his game. And every time he's come up for the blues, I've, I've said, man, I, I hope he can just find a way to beat out, you know, a Sanford or whoever it was, a McEckern and stay yep. up here. But it just I mean, never worked out so far. And we're not talking about it because he's already on the team, but uh, I don't think Clifford is necessarily got his, you know, both feet in the door by any means either. No, I could see him going on waivers. And, and then if yep. nobody takes him being sent to the AHL, uh, yeah, this team's just, just too loaded. him up at that point. Yeah. Yeah, this team's just too loaded right now. Uh, you mentioned Logan Brown, a guy who's going to be, yeah. you know, uh, I didn't, oh, I wasn't here last gonna week to talk tight. about him. I know, Kurt, yeah, Kurt and Bill mentioned it a lot, talking about him last week. But for me, I see him as a guy who's going to be motivated. You know, he he was pushed out of Ottawa because he just never seemed to materialize into the player they thought he would be. But here right. in St. Louis, man, uh. You know, and and I, I actually had a question on Twitter. Somebody said, you, are you worried that he's going to be uh, too much of a, a party boy? He's going to, you know, come out because it's a home, it's, a, it's his home team. And I was like, you know, honestly, knowing his father, I think his dad's going to be like, <laughs> no, son, you're there to work. And, yep. and I just, I don't think that is actually going to be an issue. So if he's ever going to be motivated to make an NHL roster, it's going to be this season. So it should be interesting yep. to see how that works out. I agree. It's an interesting story. I hope they give him a chance, but the more I'm looking up and down the roster at this point, I just feel like he's going to be another odd man out, especially if we, you know, if we take the chance on Neil, that definitely leaves them out. So, yeah. Um, and if Costin's in there, you know, so I do think he will play. Well, I think he'll be focused. We'll see how it translates in terms of points. Cause you know, even at the end of the day, um, and I saw this even, you know, on teams I played on uh, throughout the years was, Sometimes the players that have big impacts don't show up on the score sheet enough. And luckily we do have advanced stats these days. So mm -hmm. um, those players, you know, even a Ryan Reeves to an extent, you can see that now and data to an extent, but um, there's always that, you know, the X factor, if you will, the human side of the game um, that you can tell in games, but it doesn't always show up on the score sheet, but you know, those people are sacrificing and, and day in and day out. And, um, sometimes they still can't crock the roster or they get traded or they just get benched because, you know, they're, they're not contributing. So can he do that? You know, can he be a difference maker one and be that type of player? And two, can he show up on the score sheet enough to stay in the lineup and really get that chance? I mean, I do think he was sucked up in the whole, uh, St. Louis allure that year that he got drafted, which is why he was so high. But he also had that upside too, and you know he played on some good, um, some good USA teams growing up, the junior teams, World Juniors, and things like that. And so you know he was surrounded by high end caliber talent and great teammates, and I think that helps too. So we'll just see. But Logan Brown's definitely going to be uh, a question mark. Where does he start the year? How does he take that? How much does his dad get involved, and does that mess with him positively or negatively? And mm -hmm. what can he do once he's given that shot? And, you know, I think they're going to give him a shot at some point, no matter what. So what does he do yeah. with it at that point? Yep, I agree 100%. Should be interesting to watch. Yeah. Uh, so Blues' uh, last preseason game was last night. Not last, but the most recent preseason game. I was going to say, game tomorrow sure night. Tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, you're right. <laughs> Uh, the most recent preseason game, uh, they actually lost to the Wild Wednesday night, 4-3 to in overtime. They got off to a great start going up 3-0, just five minutes in, into the game. Uh, you scored. Oh, you did score. You did I score. Yeah, yeah, Mackenzie McKecker, Nathan Walker, and Robert Bertuzzo, who, by the way, I'm not even kidding. I, I don't know if you can tell by watching the video here, folks. I need he a helmet a on, remember? a spitting image. Of Mike Pepping. I mean, they look Less the exact hair. same. Yeah. And he's taller by quite a bit. Much taller. Yes. Dude, and do you remember, were you there, the game that I literally double took him on the screen? Yeah, like, and I was there. I feel like, yeah, because I thought I told you about it because I was like embarrassed at myself when I did it. Because I literally like, you know, they have the screens next to you. And like, I see it out of the corner of my eye and I kind of look and I was like, was that like, was a picture of me on the screen? Cause you know, I still skate and like, it was, I had a white helmet at the time and it was uh, when they were wearing the whites and I was like, and then I look back, I'm like, that's Bortuzzo. Like, are you kidding me? I'm at a blues game. This is a live feed. Like what the hell, Mike? Like, but that shows how much with the helmet on. I mean, like, 
it's I crazy. Can't deny and, it even. Well, and back in those days too, you didn't have as much gray. It was, you know, it was a little bit right. on the sides, not not as much on the top. But yeah, yeah you. I mean, I remember beard. when they acquired him. My first thought, because I, I mean, obviously, I knew who he was, Pittsburgh Penguins defenseman. But then you when I saw him, him, oh, instantly, I was like, it's Mike yeah. Pepping. The Blues you just acquired took a Mike Pepping. Of me ziplining for my honeymoon for because <laughs> it was the only one with the helmet, dude. <laughs> yeah, right. Yep, that's that's true. Yeah, it was. Oh my god, it was instant. I'm like, that is unbelievable. It's spinning yeah. image. You were, and you showed me. I was like, oh shit, he's right. Like, I was like, <laughs> damn. I was yep. like, well, at least I know he's good looking. Yeah, exactly. So those of you uh, podcasting right now, if you're wondering what Mike Pepping looks like, just picture Robert Bortuzzo about what four inches smaller. Yeah, just way more average sized and yeah. not as good at hockey. Yeah, yeah. Well, clearly, yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, other than that, twins. Oh, clearly twins. Well, I mean, I I always got the Magnus Pay RV without the beard. Whenever right? I shave yeah. my beard, I always get the ma- it's it's the nose. It's mostly the nose, but I see. It. Yeah, I've I've yeah, yeah. Whenever I have a helmet on, people are always like, "Oh, you look just like Magnus Pay RV," and I'm like, "He's better at hockey than me, unfortunately." But it, you know, you know. What he are you gonna did do? Send the wild pack in, which I was forever grateful for. That's right. That was one of probably the biggest goal of his career. That was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so uh, I think he was assisted by Saboka on that one too, as well, if I remember <laughs> correctly. All right, yeah. to that career too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thank you for Ryan O'Reilly. Um. <laughs> so uh, here's Dave Thompson. The, yeah. I he's a cancer. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, with with four minutes left, the Blues uh, had a 3-1 lead, uh, but then uh, Brandon Duhame made it 3-2, and then Nico Sturm scored 45 seconds left to tie it. Adam Beckman scored 219 into overtime to seal the game. Uh, Billy Husso was in net for the whole night, 31 saves on 35 shots. Uh, Blues were outshot 15 to seven in the second period, 10 to three in the third period, and then 2-0 in overtime. Um, I, the only reason it, listen, this is preseason. I will say a hundred percent. I don't give a shit what the final score is. I just want to make sure that the coaches saw what they needed to see. And right. that's it. I don't care. The only reason that I talk a little bit about this game is that this was something we saw a lot last year, giving up leads yep. late. Exactly. So you have to lose away historically. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Historically for sure. But I mean, last year, especially, that happened a ton. They would have a lead. Well, and that's I, what I finally got us deep into the playoffs was when we started turning that trend around. Yep, exactly. And, you know, we just talked about it earlier with the, the Brower goal in Chicago. Like, it took yep. forever to get to that point, though. And it's like, now we're already going back? Like, go back. No, come back up the hill. I got the yeah. rope. I'll help you out. Like, <laughs> what do you need me to do? Please don't go that way. Like, we've been yep. down there. It's yep. very much. We've been there. It's, it's no fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's – uh it. It's it it's crazy to see, and then again, like I mentioned, the the shots in the second and third period, and then again, of course, in overtime, yep. being outshot two zero, like that just shows the Blues. And again, I didn't watch the whole game. I'll be honest. Blues are probably a little bit on their heels. They take that three nothing lead, they get comfortable, and all of a sudden, Minnesota just keeps storming back. So again, it's preseason. I really am not going to relate it too much to regular season, but it is a trend we've noticed, and it's uh, it's something you hope gets corrected by uh, the start of the regular season. Absolutely. And, you know, it is a mix of players, and everybody likes to say that. Um, Just as easily as, yes, that is the case, it is the case for every team, right? And there are sometimes, I mean, like, there's you always see in preseason where you'll be watching one game, and, you know, the one team has nobodies, and the other team, it's literally their starting lineup for opening night, and you're like, well, no wonder it's 6 nothing, right? But this, like, we did have a good mix. Um, I'm glad to see that Huso, you know, I, I'll, I did not get to watch, I only got to watch highlights, so I'll be honest there, but, um, from what I saw, at least he looks solid and, you know, the stats support that to a degree, obviously as well. Um, well actually no 30, only 35 shots, right? 35 shots, 31 saves. Yeah. Okay. So it's not, yeah. it's not terrible. I mean, it's at least average. Not terrible. Right. Yeah. It's uh, not as good as I was thinking initially, but either way, you know, I'm look, trying to look at the positives here. Like, cause yeah. I hate giving back leads. It may, I mean, let's see, we have 
size coming in, I think we are we we are becoming more powerful. I think we still have a, a degree of quickness. Tarasenko is obviously going to be a question mark, but he's looking um, positive, and that could at least lead to a trade of some sort. If not, you know, the whole thing like the the trade talks really started after he switched agents. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Panarin's agent, and you know, he's notoriously kind of a d bag. Um, so. It's one of those things where, you know, maybe the the water's under the bridge and maybe Tara Singer re- realizes, you know, it wasn't the doctor's fault or something or or maybe I had a part in it too. Shocker. You know, like or, <laughs> or maybe he's just having fun again and he feels healthy. Right. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of question marks. But at the end of the day, like, I think we have a veteran presence and I think our defense is going to come out hungrier and healthier than we did last year. And hopefully we can stay that way. Because I do think, like, you know, last season, if I'm not mistaken, we had some pretty key injuries and long-term um, on the back end pretty quickly. And then we were just never able to recover because it was kind of rolling. Like, it was always like the next guy, instead of the next man up mentality, it was like next man hurt mentality, right, yep. on this end. So yep. it's uh, – I'm hoping that doesn't happen again. It doesn't happen every year. Um, if we look at the Blues historically, it happens to us more than other teams, but, like – uh, we to. play a hard-nosed game. We play a hard-nosed game. But I'm thinking I see a lot of poise um, and I see a lot of, I guess, promise then, like where I feel like this year we'll at least get off to a good start. You know, who knows what happens once you get into the grind and especially like late December and on. But like I think we will be able to persevere, not give away leads, and and overall, like, I don't think we're going to be winning every game by any means, but like, I think we should have a good run at it for a while until, you know, who knows what comes next and how we handle the hurdles. And especially if those are injury related or Tarasenko related um, or anything like that. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I uh, again, I, I, I mentioned this stuff just because it's preseason. People want to hear a little bit of that on a blues hockey show. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I'm not. I'm reserving judgment that that the same stuff we saw last year isn't going to come through I don't think it's going to be this necessarily. Maybe. You never know. You never know. You never know. We definitely Podcasters, were saying I've seen it wasn't happening. Yep. Oh. Podcasters, uh, he's holding up a Blues Stanley Cup, which uh, I love. That's beautiful. Um, but, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's uh, – you got to hope the injuries are better. And that's something that that we've talked about on this show. You know, Colton Pareko comes out and has a healthy season. Um, all of a sudden that contract he signed this summer looks great. Uh, because if yep. he's healthy, he he's came into our me. office that day. Oh, did he? Yeah. We didn't know he signed it until after he left. And then we saw the, the post on social media, but he designed a glove with us. And then, uh, he came in to pick it up that day. Colton Pareko designed a glove. Colton. Is he a big softball player yeah. or something? Um, no, nah, man, he designed a baseball glove. It was a pitcher's glove, too. So who knows what he's doing with it? But uh, it was Damn. sharp. It was dark sherry, like a nice uh, kind of uh, dark brown with a reddish, slight reddish tint on it with some royal uh, royal accents. It looked nice. Nice. That's awesome. Is he a lefty or a righty? Yeah. Uh, don't remember. I think, well, we should know. Like, which way does he shoot? I think he's well, that's though, right? not always the case. Though. I know. I've seen, true. I've seen some people. That um, that yeah, he's he shoots right. By the way, yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, I I I I don't know. I mean, I I shoot right and or I shoot left and I I throw right. So you know, yeah. you never My know. My mom's like that. Well, she doesn't play hockey, but <laughs> she, yeah. I was say is your mom a big men's yeah. league guy or <laughs> yeah, she is. You know, and she's the enforcer, man. That's right. 66 <laughs> and just dropping bows on people like she's fucking <laughs> the rock. Like she, I was going to say, just like she's Nathan Walker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good point. Yeah. Yep. Ah. Uh, no, she, well, folks, uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, no you're good. I was, I was just going to say, uh, we'll go ahead and take another break here, folks, here from our friends over at Center Ice Brewery, which coming out of the break, we'll talk to Mike a little bit about Center Ice Brewery. I know he's a big fan of them as well. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that. And, then, uh, obviously, uh, if you've seen anything from social media with the blues, they've been having a little bit of fun this preseason. So we'll talk about that yeah. as well. Center Ice Brewery is St. Louis's only hockey themed brew house. Stop on in during the next game to experience the ultimate hockey fan brewery while sampling various hockey inspired beers, such as old arena lager, the beauty IPA, 
their rotating pale ale series, or seasonal offerings such as their Imperial Stout, their Lime Sherbet Sour, and much more. While you're there enjoying any number of their fantastic beverages, you can admire the bar top and tables made of authentic arena wood and the actual penalty box door from the old barn. Located at 3126 Olive Street in Midtown St. Louis, it's one of the best places to watch a blues game, or any game. Visit centericebrewery.com today to schedule a no-contact curbside pickup or make a reservation in the tap room. Center Ice Brewery, let's go blues. Please drink responsibly. So, uh, Mike, I know that you uh, are a fan of Center Ice Brewery. Um, what's uh, what's one of your fa- I mean, we talk about the beauty, but what's uh, outside of the beauty? What's one of your favorite beers there? Um, so, Old Arena Lager can't go wrong with. They've had oh, a yeah. couple um, of the small batches that, uh, and some of their originals that um, I really dug. There was a size on like early on. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it was. I was oh, like, yeah. oh my gosh, this is fire! <laughs> like, give yeah. me seven hundred, please. Um, and then <laughs> um, the what was the Brett Hall Pilsner that they that they had? Oh, um, that was the uh, God damn. Yeah, well, I, can't I can't remember. I can't think of it either. But that one was really good. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say Adam. Adam from the bar is listening right now and just screaming, going, "Come on, you idiots!" Uh, um, I'm sorry. I apologize. I do too. I don't make I, it out downtown as much as I can. I'm out here in Wildwood now. I was I gonna still, say I, I make it to Friar Tux to get some cans when I can. Yeah, it's like gonna... Old Arena Lager, right? Or or yep. the Beauty, like if I can yep. find it. Like, and my go-to is the Beauty, right? So um it's um and what was so they just had one recently i'm gonna search it so i don't have to disappoint adam again but they had one that i really wanted to try and if they still have it maybe i'll try to make it out there before it's gone here in a minute um so uh, while while you're getting to that i'll read a uh comment here in the youtube chat i think this team uh this is from jimmy holland by the way I think this team has the potential to be one of the deepest Blues teams in recent memory. Hope we let the kids play this year. I think we have veteran leadership. Would like to sign Neil, though. Um, yeah. Man, I as excited as I am about how, the way Neil's played. I, I'm i so lukewarm on whether that's a good idea or not. He's looked great. Yeah. And we all know that he, in the past, we made the joke, but he can be the real deal. Exactly. Um, but you know, can he do that? Eighty-two games. You know, obviously he probably nope. wouldn't play all eighty-two games. I don't games. think so. No, but you know, if you keep him in the lineup and you play him third, fourth line, is he a guy that can still contribute the way that you hope he can? And yes. The only way you're going to know that is by giving him a contract and playing him the regular season. Exactly. And the issue is he has not been in the room long enough. All right. So, come from a player's perspective, Jeff knows this, but. It is the locker room is way more important than a lot of people think. And it Mm -hmm. is the relationships. But you have to think of this. This is a brotherhood. This is a family. You are together for 82 games on the ice, which means you are together for like 275 days on and off the ice. And that comes with family. Like, I mean, you don't always like all your family, right? Like you go through tiffs, you go through feuds. Well, do you work it out or not? And sometimes it takes years to work it out with family, right? I mean, there's people that don't talk to family members like ever again. Yeah. Well, imagine that within the confines of an 82 game season, you know? So does James Neal fit in the room? That's my biggest question mark. Like, yes, he has the high end talent, but he also has the, um, not the stigma, the, you know, like he's kind of big headed about it. I don't know why I yeah. can't think of the word, but he has like, so he has that, um, kind of personality and he could be clash with people in the room and has he been around enough? Does he like them? Do they like the, you know, do they like him? Is it going to be a two way relationship that you can get along uh, you, or you can at least be okay with each other so you can fight for each other on the ice uh, type of thing. Or is it going to be like it has been lately in his career, especially in Edmonton? I mean, he's playing with some of the top players in the league and yeah, it's Edmonton. Um, there's a lot of issues, right? Uh, we could say the same thing with going to or coming from Ottawa at this point or Buffalo, right? I mean, uh, again, we kind of kicked them off a cliff and they were already walking towards it. But here's Dave Thompson, <laughs> Vladimir Saboka, and Patrick Berglund, who's going to have a breakdown, right? You know, nobody could have predicted that <laughs> on top of, well, we could have predicted the other two. But, you know, nobody yes. could predict a Berge, like doing that either. And it was like, so we kind of booted him off that hill. But like 
these organizations aren't the best, but James Neal is also not the best himself, right? Like he, he has this attitude. Um, he thinks like to a degree that he deserves things and he used to like, yeah, you used to deserve it in Pittsburgh, like, and you earned it there and that's why you got it. And so now um, I worry that he is, you know, will he return to that? Will he finally, cause you know, we're all people, right? He could easily have been like, oh man, I was an asshole and like, I'm going to fix it and I'm going to be better. And like, this is my chance. And I could see that too. I mean, he is now on a PTO. James Neal is on a PTO, right? And so is Michael Froelich, which, I mean, I didn't even see him really in the in the preseason, but he was kind of a big name for a while. So I was shocked mm -hmm. when we signed him to a PTO and just to learn. I was like, oh, shit. Like, I didn't realize he was PTO status by now, right? I thought right. he was still kicking it somewhere. Um, yep. And then we just release him. You know, it's like, well, yeah, uh, enjoy retirement or overseas or wherever you're going, I guess. But, <laughs> yeah. It's like, so James Neal, like, it's just such a big question mark. Is it worth the gamble? And then, I mean, we talked about this offline earlier. If it's league minimum 750 K, that doesn't sound bad to let him prove himself. However, like, I don't, I don't, you know, just off the top of my head, understand even the waiver situation there. Like with Neil, I guess he would just have to clear waivers and then we could send him down. But Woody, and at the end of the day, who cares, I guess, if he doesn't. But yeah, right. Like, then it's still a roster spot. And we talked about neighbors. We talked about Peronovich. We talked about, you know, even Walker to an extent. But, you know, he was lower on the list. But um, McEckern, uh, Clifford, you know, Brown, all these guys, like, do they make a stronger case at that point than Neil? You know? Yep. And and do you think they do? And I'm asking you, I, Jeff, do you think? I, yeah, no, I, I was actually going to say two weeks ago um, when they, when we talked about it on the show, James Neal and Michael Froelich have signed PTOs with the Blues. The first thing I said was, I guarantee you 100%, neither of these guys will be a St. Louis Blue to open the regular season. Now, James Neal has done everything he can to prove me wrong and and yeah. show that he can bring it. The only reason I thought they signed them, which maybe, and I still stand by that. At the Army beginning, loves to do that. No, he does that. And, and it's also because uh, Oscar Sundquist and uh, Robert yep. Thomas, uh, yep. Sundquist is hurt and Thomas wasn't signed yet. I thought, well, he signed these two veterans to take their spot in line rushes. And I think that is originally what he was thinking. Yep. But then shortly after he signed Thomas, and as I told you, I, I went and saw some Blues training camp. Sunquist right. was taking regular shifts for the most part. I mean, he's yep. he's looking great. He's and now it's, it's this situation of Neil has looked great in the preseason, showing that he's got chemistry with some of these guys. And it, it just makes you say, uh-oh. You know, which it's a good problem. It's a good problem right. to have, you know, Especially what do you do price. with James Neal, you know? And yep. and you have to hope that a team like, I mean, I don't know what their cap situations are, but you have to hope a team like Chicago or Minnesota or teams within the division aren't watching too closely and saying, maybe we could pluck this guy. And all of a sudden he could be a blues killer for us. You know, I, you never know what could happen, but I think now, my 100% guarantee that Neil would not be a blue in the regular season. I might have to walk that jeopardy. one back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What'd you bet? Is it like Luckily, a pants down nothing. from the ladies situation? I mean, I could do that. Yeah? I'll go ahead okay. and say yes. Yeah, let's do that. One show with pants <laughs> off, but he has to stand up at least twice. Oh no. I don't think our <laughs> listeners want that. <laughs> yeah. Right. You'd be like, I'm actually not wearing pants right now, Mike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me out. Little do you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, good stuff. And by the way, earlier, were you thinking of the plum sour? No, um, I was actually thinking of this uh, Chillax um, collab that they did. Oh, with peach milkshake. yeah, I haven't because I, I know had milk, I, I'm pretty sure they're doing the more milkshakes, the ice because it's the whole ice cream series, right? Right. So, like peach, not necessarily my favorite, but I mean, I'm staring at the picture right now, and it looks phenomenal. So maybe it is going to be my favorite, and I just don't know that yet. But I also, there's probably going to be other ones that I also want to try. And it's so intriguing to me because I've had some other stuff from Chillax, and obviously I've had a lot from Center Ice, been a fan since before it was an official brewery. Um, Steve Albers is the man. Like yes, I have personal is. connections with him. And so uh, obviously uh, Center Ice Brewery is near and dear to my heart. But mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, I've never tasted a bad beer, <laughs> like, you know? So it's like, when I see stuff like this, I get excited. 
And it's like, oh my gosh, I got to get it out there. Like that's probably the only thing bringing me downtown besides the blues. Every once right. in a while, the Cardinals are work, but uh, outside of that, you know, it's like I don't really go downtown anymore. And because I'm, who who knew I would ever end up as like a West Countyite permanently, hundred <laughs> percent of the time? But here we are. Yep. No, it's uh, no, it's funny is that uh, there, so when when the pandemic was in full swing and it was nobody leave your damn houses. Right. The only beer I was drinking was I was going to center ice like every dude, I Friday. I saw it all over your social. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I did. Cause it was just like, and you're right, one well, of the first people I week. swear right after they announced they were in fire tux. It was like two hours later you posted, you're like, I got my center rise of fire tux. I was like, yep. Steve just posted that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how quick did Jeff drive? He was going 90. Yeah, right. yeah, gotta try, gotta get my ass to Fryer Tux yeah. and put, get some. Uh, boss, beer. yeah, no, I'm sick. Cough. Yeah, all <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry, don't pay attention to my social media, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we blocked him years ago. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, right. Uh, no, I, uh, I, 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 that was all the beer I had. That was the only beer I drank for the entire like lockdown from what March until June or July. I yeah. went there pretty much weekly and was just and getting like, man. you know, a couple six packs or four packs or whatever. And um, yeah, now I, I look back and and it's funny because like I remember my wife saying like, are you because she she's a so she's a big like seltzer fan. And at that time, they yeah. did not have any seltzers yet. So right. she's like, Dave, well, yeah, she's like, well, you know, I wanted some seltzers and I'm just like, well, you can go get the seltzers. I'm going right. to center ice. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yep. Has she tried Devu? Yeah, she has. And she loved it. She thought it was great. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Everybody I've heard try. I'm not a seltzer guy. I'm a beer dude. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't like wine. Too. Like, bourbons, all right. I need to be in the mood, though. Used to be a big gin and tonic dude in college. And so kind of got burnt out on those even. Uh, tequila, hate it unless it's in a margarita. And <laughs> uh, that leaves me back to beer. Well, vodka, yep. also hate it. Threw it up yep. too many times in college. <laughs> Tequila is, uh, I always say that that turns me into a Jeff that I don't like. I, yeah. uh, I, I become a man a that slope. I don't even recognize when I drink tequila. So I yeah. try to stay away well, from it. Yeah. It, it transports you places. It really does. Literally <laughs> really and does. figuratively. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, uh, Cause when you so, wake up in the morning, you're always like, well, here's half my shirt. And there's one yeah. shoe. And all wait, right, I'm in right, a ditch. Right. Like, I don't think yeah. I've actually ever told this story on the show before, but I feel like I need to. So when I was in, and, and Mike, you just bring this shit out of me. Um, when <laughs> Wait, bring me on. Yeah. Wow. So when I was in uh, Vegas, uh, God, probably 11 years ago now, um, I was you told, hey, we're what happens in Vegas. And even in Vegas, right, Jeff? It, well, it's not going to stay in Vegas this time because I'm going to tell it's the not. story. Too bad. Earmuffs, Jessica. Yeah, earmuffs. Yeah, exactly. Thank God she doesn't listen and to the shit. show. Yeah. yeah right. Well, me, yeah, in 10 years, Shay's going to hear this and be like, I just heard you tell this story. No, I told you not to listen to Let's no, Go Blues Radio. No, I said <laughs> not episode three, season four. <laughs> like pretend. Whatever yeah. um, it says 10 years right down there, man. It's the 10th season. I'm sorry. I know. Oh, and I not even saw those. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Anyway, so uh, we were in Vegas, and uh, a couple of my buddies were like, let's do tequila shots. And I said, absolutely not. I've sworn off tequila unless it's in a margarita, like you said. No right. way. Well, they talked me into it. It's like, you know, hey, man, you're in Vegas. Come on. They, okay, they repeated the question, and you went, well, okay. Oh, okay, you twisted yeah. my arm. All right, that's Indian rug burn me. here. I'm um, like uh, Will Ferrell and Austin Powell. Damn, three times. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So, so, so I, uh, let's just say I woke up the next morning. I'll just skip to the next morning. I woke up the next morning yeah. and I'm literally like walking. We got this suite, um, at whatever hotel we were staying at and I'm yeah. walking around. I'm with four of my buddies and I just, hangover I'm, situation. and I'm like, yeah, it really was. And I'm like, guys, I seriously, it's going to sound so stupid. Where the hell are my pants? And they're <laughs> like, dude, seriously like what do you mean like you probably slept in them and i'm like no i didn't i woke up i was in my underwear i was on the couch where the hell are my pants i'm like you guys are fucking with me you clearly hit them tell me where they are and they're like dude we haven't touched your pants like what the fuck well 
So then I just like, it's like 20 minutes and I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to start drinking. I'll find my pants. They, they're, they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll turn up. Priorities, so right? I went to grab some ice to like make a mixed drink. And there are my pants in the freezer. <laughs> and I pull them out and I just go, uh, guys, seriously, you're telling me you were didn't they dry hide my or pants? like wet and frozen? They were frozen. They were completely frozen. So you soaked and them before you put them in there. I don't, I don't know if they were did. soaked or not, but they were clearly like, well, okay. They weren't soaked. They weren't, they were, they weren't wet, but they were okay. clearly like, they went chilled. in dry. Yes, they probably went in dry. Yeah. Natural so, Jeff sweat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's probably what it was. That's probably what it was. Glory. So, so I, uh, I take the pants out. I'm like, guys, come on. You're telling me you didn't hide these bullshit. And one of them starts laughing. He goes, holy shit. I remember now. I remember what happened. And I go, what? And he goes, dude, you took your pants off when we got back to the hotel and you said, I'm going to put my pants in the freezer and that way in the morning I'll have a pants sickle. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm like, what? And he goes, dude, I swear to God, I remember it clear as day now. Like, that's what you did. You did that. And I'm like, it must have been hot. I was like, you know what? That uh, that sounds probably true. That's that's about right. That sounds like something I would do. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious! Can't say as I've ever put anything other than, well, you know, like beers and especially in glass bottles and well, cans. They've exploded, but I don't think I put yep. any clothing in the freezer. Well, there you go. Now, now you We've know. We've done a couple. Who has. Uh, we had a couple pranks, and one actually was done by one of my buddies. The craziest thing I ever saw. Well, we did a couple of nights, right? And you got to chip it out. And it's like shit because it's like your mouth guard or something. Or sometimes right. your ear guards if you take a lot of time because nobody wears ear guards. Let's be honest. Yep. And if you're forced yep. to, it's one thing. If you wear them by choice, <coughs> Crosby, you're just embarrassing. <laughs> um, they don't stop anything. They don't help anything unless somebody was to step on you with the skate. Yep. Or if a fuck hits you, which is extremely hard. But I have heard of it now. And I also heard my I have a buddy that's pro ear guard, so I'm always chirping him. Uh, and I heard a story of a puck hitting an ear guard and the ear guard sliced the ear because the puck Whoa. hit so hard that the guy's ear got sliced off by the ear guard. So now, end all be all, anytime he ever brings up the ear guard argument, I got that story in the back pocket. Yeah. Regardless. So, well, now I lost my train of thought. Now I'm thinking about I, ear guards. They're so uh... unnecessary ear guards yeah i i you know i've uh control. the last time i bought a helmet it had ear guards on it and i was just like they all do you gotta take them off yeah oh I it was the pranks off. yeah the so pranks. we used yeah, to you know pranks. we used to put stuff in ice right and then uh one time our buddies took it to the next level and they literally made a jello mold out of this kid's cage and like they put fishing wire into this huge pot to hold the cage in the exact middle of it and then oh, they boy. just put it on a platter and put it in his locker stall. And so, like, he walked into practice, and his cage was in the middle of a uh, jello mold, and it was <laughs> college. So, like, you had to wear a cage, right? So, he literally had to, like, dig through this lemon jello, and, like, it got everywhere, and he had to clean it up. Like, coach was so pissed, but he was a rookie. So, naturally, we made him clean it up. <laughs> right. And, and then he was late to practice. So, coach made him skate. Like, it was, it was oh, terrible. Oh, that's fantastic. But super funny. <laughs> I don't know. You know, tangents, ADD. It's my friend and my enemy. Oh, yeah. I hear you 100%. 100%. Uh, by the way, so I, I've got to ask you, Mike, before we get into the next story here with the Blues having fun in preseason, did you notice the, the player in the corner by your name? Do you know who that is? Can you tell? Where? Behind me? What? Oh. Who is Fuck that? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. No, I didn't notice. And of course, you put Pronger <laughs> next to you. Yeah. Hey, he's still kicking it. He's got like two cups now, man. Uh, I'm back in Just shape. Me, Maybe we give it a go give, finally, right? Give me the name, buddy. Give me the name. Who is that? Oh, uh, well, well, we'll inform the listeners. So uh, <laughs> the only person that does not like me in inside <laughs> and out of the Blues organization is one Mr. Ian Cole. <laughs> And the reason is Mike doesn't like him first. And I forgot that players can read what I write about them sometimes. And so I wrote a few articles about, and I was more pissed at the organization though, dude, I think I told you this, but like 
I was pissed because the organization was placing him as high as Petrangelo at the time. Mm -hmm. I was like, this guy is like a fucking turd compared to Petrangelo. Like, what are you doing? And like, Petrangelo's not even that good at this point. So stop making Ian Cole so high. So they were basically like, I wasn't, I didn't think he was the worst prospect by any means. I didn't think he was a terrible person by any means. We were just playing him way more than we should have. And in situations, I did not want us to because we were still on the bubble of even making the playoffs. And I wasn't willing to risk those situations, right? Well, that came across my writing pretty aggressively at times. And, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. So now I realize that. At the time, one, didn't think he'd ever read it. Two, didn't realize probably how harsh it came across, especially if it's about you. And so mm-hmm. he was, he told um, Jeff's friend, actually, I hadn't even met him yet. This is how I met him. But he told uh, Jeremy Rutherford, longtime blues writer, obviously like a staple in blues history at this point. Um, he told Rutherford, whoever this Mike Pepping dude is, if you tell him, tell him if he writes one more article about me, I'm beating his ass. <laughs> so that's how I met Jeremy Rutherford, because he comes up and he's like, Jeff, hey, man, what's up? Yeah, because they were already cool. And he's like, oh, yeah, you're Mike. Hey, and by the way, Ian Cole says this. And I was like, <laughs> but I was laughing, because at the time, I was still in pretty good shape, right? Like, it was before my first child was born, my daughter. And so I was still in pretty good shape. And I was like, I had seen him without a shirt on in the locker room. And I was like, I had seen him on the ice. And I was like, okay, like, you know, he'll probably win. But at the end of the day, it won't be embarrassing on my end. And like, then I could <laughs> right. say I fought an NHL or like while he was in the NHL. Right. And I obviously I knew it wasn't really going to happen, but I was thinking that in my mind. And in my mind, I probably like, you know, I was touting myself up a little too much even, but so that was why the Ian Cole burn that I didn't, man. This thing's like mirrored. I got to, it's hard to point. Yeah. 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 I know. Yeah. 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 That's why the burn, why it exists now. That was a good one though. I didn't even realize, Uh, dude. I thought it was the same you had for every show. So I didn't even notice. Nope. Nope. I, uh, I saw the two. So that's why I leaned in too. Cause I thought maybe you put Stasny in there for me. Oh, that would have been cool. Yeah. But, but no, I got to be funny and put in Ian Cole instead. (laughs) Yeah. Well, no, that was priceless, dude. I can't believe I didn't notice this whole time. Oh, solid burn. Solid burn. I'm so proud of myself. (laughs) That was a good one. (laughs) Yeah. He got Uh, traded like uh, three weeks after that happened. Yeah. And and I remember, I remember just looking at you or I remember texting you and being like, Hey, did you see it? And you just go, yeah, thank God. (laughs) Yeah. Party time. Yeah. Ian Cole. And then I probably wrote an article that said the Ian Cole experiment is officially over. Yeah. <laughs> Fight me from Pittsburgh, bitch. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. By the way, Ian Cole, now you've had a great career. Again, never hated you. I like yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, and shit. Come on. We can you be just friends. Being we'll have a beer by us. Hockey players, right? Yeah. We'll have a beer just over. Just being honest. I don't, you know, and I didn't blame you then. You know, I, I respected yeah. you for, for putting that shit out because you were being honest. Who cares? Exactly. I was. And again, it was more about the organization. But again, mm-hmm. did not think he would actually read it and how he would read it if he read it, right? So, yeah, right. Yep. Yeah, you live and learn. That's right. That's right. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and get into uh, some more about the Blues here. Uh, they've been having a little bit of fun in the preseason. Uh, David Perron oh, yeah. leveled Craig Berube in practice, and they drew a very large outline of him uh, for the next practice. I loved this quote from Baruby. He says, quote, David and I collided and I let up on him. I went down because I didn't want to put him down, (laughs) which I was like, Baruby was a, I mean, he's a fucking tank. He's a big dude. He was a fighter in the NHL. Uh, But man, I, I just, I love to see the the players having fun in preseason, you know, uh, uh, letting loose a little bit. Um, I feel like a lot of fans and, and maybe I'm, uh, reading into tweets, but like, I feel like a lot of fans are like, Oh, this is serious. You know, these guys need to be ready for the regular season. I don't want that shit. I want them. I, I look at, I look at preseason, like how I look at my rec league, you know, it's like mm-hmm. these guys are showing up, getting in shape, you know, well, they're already in shape, but you know, getting themselves game ready getting in game shape. Yeah. Yeah. Getting in game shape and, and just, you know, they're having fun. They're just having a good time out there. Yep. Yeah, totally agree. Um, I do think there is some merit to it, especially for those on the bubble. Um, I do think there's merit to it even for the vets, though, just to make sure they're dialed in by the start of the season. But you can do that passively even. You know, you can even tell them practice a lot of times, but you do need that game situation to make sure you're reading the plays right, you're reacting on time um, and appropriately. Um, But, 
Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not the real season. It's great that they're lighthearted. Again, I'm a big locker room guy. So mm-hmm. it's great to see that they are having laughter in there. Like Barubi, I think uh, the cup year, the way he was brought in and the situation, um, it was easy to be positive. And obviously we saw the outcome. And then, you know, the next year, obviously uh, it was a little bit different. So um, it's one of those things where he can lose that that relationship with the players too. And a lot of it comes from the room. Um, It comes from him and his staff. But then again, like if the players can joke around and obviously, you know, the next piece we'll talk about shows and points to that again, um, it bodes well. And that's why I think the blues are going to get off to a good start. Uh, It might not be like right away, you know, we might lose a couple up front, but um, I do think we're going to, we're going to have a hot start. And I think this is just one of the reasons why, because the room seems to be loose and in that right mindset, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah, and and I'll add um, uh, that I think the Blue social media team has done a great job of making sure these kind of stories get out. Um, I, I again, I love reading these as as a player myself, as a fan of the team. Just you know, I want these guys to be loose. I want them to be ready. Um, Mike, you're on the move. Where are you had yeah, to get more beer? We're, we're live, dude. Well, my <laughs> didn't realize we we're going to be talking this long, but we're having a great combo, right? So now I got to leave my setup and go get my laptop charger. Oh shoot! Oh, you guys, you guys are getting a tour. Everybody, be quiet. <laughs> the kids are asleep. And now we're gonna get another beer. All this right, is, good, dude, good beer. Crikey, we're out here in the wildwood. Wild. <laughs> Jesus. Let's see what we find in the gay rush. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, so we are. Uh, We'll talk a little bit about uh, Mike's frozen up there a little bit. It's probably because he walked away from his router. Uh, so I'll go ahead and talk about Jordan Bennington sneaking onto Sorry. the ice. Forgot when I go in the garage, I lose connection. Yep, that's it all really right. It is the that's wild right. out there. That's all right. It's truly the wild in the garage. No internet. Uh, Jordan Bennington snuck onto the ice as a skater after the win in Chicago. Uh, joined the celebration um, of the win. Uh Everybody probably saw this at this point. If you're listening to this show, I guarantee you saw it. Um, My favorite personally was uh, Craig Berube's reaction when he, when he opens the door and he like, you know, you know, Berube likes shaking hands and he walks away and he like, kind of like pats Bennington. And then he like looks at him and it's like, Oh shit. Like finally made him realize what was going on. And then he, then he just walks away. Like, no, (laughs) Well, no, I mean, no like, real he look, response. I think he made a comment too, like, "Hey, he's not." You know, he might even said it to another coach, but he was like, "He's not really going out there, right?" Like for a yeah. second, he was like, "He better not be thinking he's getting a shift." <laughs> yeah, right. That was that was awesome. Um, and then I gotta uh, tell you though, I had a better reaction in my book, and you're gonna think I'm just biased because because you Bertuzzo. can probably already guess by me saying that. Yeah, but dude, his reaction in the handshake line, his double take. And yeah, like maybe it's just because I saw myself in his face, I guess, and I've made that face. Um, <laughs> and so, but like when he turns and then he turns back to the line, he's just like, you know, mouth breathing, like laughing and like looking and like, did you see who that is? Right. Like, I don't know. That one got me even more than Baruby, but they that were both good. classic. No, they were all, I mean, you know what the funny part was, was the fact that he went through the line and like, was yeah. like, hey, great work, great work. In the and middle like, too, right? Yeah. Some people didn't even like, oh yeah, yeah, great game, great game. You know, it was yeah, like I probably didn't even have. realize it was yeah. <laughs> it was Bennington. You know, and we would have been like goalie partners at the time, right? So he would have sat back down next to me in player gear, and I would have been like just uh, taking my shit off and been like, Why are you in player gear? And he'd be like, You bumped <laughs> me in line. What do you mean? You know, then I would have been late to the party. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> This is awesome stuff. I love it. I love seeing this team have fun. And then Ryan O'Reilly mic'd yeah. up in practice. Uh, that was something else. To, and again, just Locking a great job goals. of the Blues social media team. Uh, yeah. Calling Bennington Hooington, I said on social media, <laughs> that I'm just like, okay, that is a locker room nickname now. That's something I guarantee, like, in a couple nights, you know, and maybe in a week or two, somebody will say, like, uh, but Jordan Hooington, and it's it's yep. just gonna get a laugh in the whole locker room. <laughs> yep. And then somebody will chirp him with it from another team in January and we'll go on a historic run and end up with yep. another cup. Which we That's can true. say until January. That's true. Yeah. 
You know what? I agree. Let's say that every Literally, week. Literally, no matter the situation, because we saw what we did when we won the first one. Yep, that's right. That's right. Uh, so next up for the Blues, Friday, October 8th versus Columbus. That's tomorrow night if you're listening live, 7 p.m., final preseason game. And then Saturday, October 16th at 8 o'clock in Colorado, regular season begins. So we've kind of already previewed that a little bit this uh, this evening. But, um, man, get here faster. Now that, the, like, yeah, uh, right. like Austin Lynch said in the chat, now that the Cardinals are out, I am – 100 percent ready for some regular season hockey yep i will tell you dude i don't know if you do this with shay but um whenever there's a cardinal stay at school i 100 percent of the time make sure my kids wear blues gear <laughs> shay has uh shay has a, a a blue blues uh pair of uh shorts and so like i'll put a cardinals top on them but i put the blue shorts on them too Nice. There you go. <laughs> yep. There you go. Yeah. Well, my problem is now, like, uh, they had a Cardinals Day, obviously, um, yesterday for the game. Yeah. And then I was like, well, I want to support the cards in this situation. But, you know, Blues weren't even playing this preseason, right? And I was like, oh, they don't own any Cardinals stuff. My yeah. one son does. And, you know, he was, it's uh, my daughter and my son both go to the same school now, but my son's still in the preschool side of it. And, but, you know, it was Cardinals Day, right? So I was like, I was like, Callan, just wear this shirt, dude. I'm like, it's like a Cardinals jersey, dude. You love jerseys. Like, just put it on. It's awesome. It's Cardinals Day at school. Everyone's going to be high-fiving you. You're going to make so many more friends. Like, you know, trying to talk it all up. And he's three. And he just went, no. And then, But then he pulled out a blue shirt. And I was like, well, all right. <laughs> all right. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay. You know, twist dad's arm. That's awesome. He's a uh, me, so. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. And Shay, you know, Shay, he, uh, it's funny because, uh, we'll always be like, you know, Hey, we're going to watch, you know, uh, I don't know. My, my wife loves that mass singer show. So yeah, like, we dude, turned, we were just watching it before we got on here. I, we were I too, trying to guess the celebrities. Yeah, me too. It was fun. Yeah. But Tiger, the cable Tiger. guy who would have guessed it. Yeah. Right. I know. But, but no, um, we turned that on the night and the first thing he looked at me and he goes, he's goes hockey. And I was like, no, <laughs> no, no, we're not going to watch hockey. And he goes, let's go blues. And I go, no, nice. we're not going to watch the Blues as much as I. If they were on right now, yes, that's exactly yes. what we'd be doing. But they're not yes. on right now, so sorry, buddy. <laughs> yep, that's awesome. That's I know you're raising them right. That's right. That's right. He's learning. He's learning the right way to live. Absolutely. Um, so some rapid fire tidbits from around the NHL. Uh, big news coming from Robin Lehner. He uh, has accused NHL teams of medical malpractice, uh, offering benzodiaz di- I, I never say this word right benzodiazepines diazepines yeah, yeah. and ambien like to players drugs, without right? prescriptions yeah uh he threatened to release one story a day unless things quote get fixed uh quote from him he says i've made crazy amount of mistakes but lying about what i've seen for 12 years is not one of them i don't care what they say i don't lie about these things i'll keep going have stored stories for a year. Watch now when NHL will try to cancel me. And then something else he said was Philadelphia Flyers, question mark. Dinosaur coach treating people like robots, not human. Fire these dinosaurs. Fire Vigneault. First story, I got proof. Try to shake your way out of this one. Uh, and obviously, Leonard has never played for the Flyers, never played for Vigneault either. So uh, clearly he's... And, and a lot of this uh, stemmed from the Jack Eichel situation in Buffalo and him having Eichel's back. Um, well, he made those comments about rushing back from injuries too, to Buffalo yeah. a few months back. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's, and he's very vocal about this kind of thing, which, um, which I support hundred percent. Right. If, if you're seeing this kind of thing happen, uh, you need to, rep- I mean, and that's the issue. You know, we, we had Grant Fuhr on the show, little shameless plug there. Right. Um, and Grant Fuhr Coco told the story. Himself. Yes. Yeah. Coco himself. He, he told the story about how, um, you know, he came to the NHL and told them I have a cocaine issue. And, and granted this was in the eighties. This is much different than now. And, and they, they said, basically were yeah, like, get in line. They were like, okay. Not really. <laughs> yeah. it's serious, They're like, right? okay, it's we're going to suspend you because you have a cocaine issue. Don't play for a year, you know? And, and that was an issue. Now, obviously things have changed, but, 
to change these mental health issues that we're seeing in, in some of these players, it's going to take players going to social media, in my opinion. Yep. And so I say good for him for, for coming out and speaking his mind. And, you know, yeah, he might have gone to the NHL already. I don't know if he did or not, but we haven't for him seen to come people, out. So I think he has. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, he has. Yeah, he's he had a press conference ad- admitting uh, a lot of talks with the NHL. They they said they 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 reached out and wanted to interview him and talk to him about it. So I think that we are going to start seeing change. But I love this. I I love Robin Lehner stepping up for other players and saying, you know, hey, this is what I'm hearing, and I know if I tell the NHL, it's going to get swept under the rug. I want people to be harassing them about it. And, and right. I think that's the right move. Yeah. So this is a, a situation. There's It's definitely a double-edged sword to a degree. There are um, a lot of inputs you need to consider. And I do think he knows that the NHL, uh, he's seen success in other areas. Like we've seen racial issues and things like get worked out through this type of uh, push. Right. So I do think that he he knew he could use his platform for good. I think ever since he's tackled his own um, mental health and abuse, substance abuse issues, he's become a big advocate for it. And I will be the first to say that I did not like Robin Leonard when he came into the league. I thought he was a douche. I thought he was an asshole. And then I didn't know anything about his issues, though, right? Like, I had no idea. And and when he came out with that, like, it instantly turned me into one of his biggest advocates because I realized the struggle he was going through. I realized why he was – because you saw it in his play on the ice. You saw it in his reactions to goals. You saw it in his temper and when it flared. Um, you saw it in the locker room, right? So, like, now all that makes sense. And it's like, okay, I get it. And, man, he was lost. Like, he was struggling. And now he's getting help and he's better. So, like, obviously that's an easy story to get behind and cheer. Well, in this case, he's trying to champion that. And he has, in a lot of these cases, you know, again, with um, what he was talking about with the injury treatment before, now it's substance abuse and mental health. Um, and obviously with the next point we'll get to with Carey Price, that ties into this as well. Um, so I think I'm glad I'm glad that he spoke out. I just want to make sure um, that it's taken seriously. The NHL, um, you know, they, they vet it because he is making some pretty crazy claims. Well, not crazy, but serious uh, claims is, is what I mean by when I say crazy there. Um, and it, it's one of the issues that, uh, obviously there should be some repercussions. There should be, I mean, at the very least fines, if not uh, other actions and firings, if not other actions taken, but, uh, hopefully there's some, some new, I don't want to say rules, but mandates or whatever you'll call them like in place for teams and conduct, um, because it's serious, but at the same time, there's the other side of this coin. And it is very much athletes who need like, I don't want to say like therapists because it's not that serious, but like counselors who can coach them through this because like Grant Fuhr, he was one of the few, again, I made a joke and it is a very serious issue, um, but he's one of the few that could come to peace with it. You know how many other cocaine addicts are throughout the NHL, even maybe to this day, right? That don't even realize it. I mean, there's another point we'll maybe get to later about Evander Kane. Like he's got a lot of what I would call addictions, I guess, because I don't know what else you can justify it as at this point. But, you know, there are all these players that may not realize that and they need to address that side of it because it's like a varsity blues situation. Like, yeah, you got one side of it saying, do it, do it now. This is going to make you better. You have to do it, like get in the game. But then you got the other side where the players like, give it to me. Like, I want to get back at the, especially with hockey players, right? Like I want to be back out there. I mean, Every, even at our level, Jeff, like, you know, when we oh, get yeah. in the face and like we're bleeding, we're like, OK, well, can I put a towel on it for a minute and then go next shift, please? You know, like that's just what we do. It's how we're built. And obviously they're pros. So they are at the top of the line. And so I think it does need so to be addressed, I'm, but on both I'm sh- sides. I'm showing my <laughs> disgusting foot right now. It's well, you see my that's from a month I, ago. I, I made a I you made a bad that skate, weren't you? Oh when yeah, 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 yeah! You took one right in the face. Yeah, yeah. Yep. A stick, um, a flying stick from across a fly- the damn ring. Yeah, it wasn't even like uh like somebody I wasn't was like even trying in the to play. check him. Dude, it, I wasn't even he the was, play. I was he curling. was following the play, and yeah, the stick just yeah. came out of nowhere, like out of the guy's hands, catapulted right to his nose. Yeah. No, for me, I just made a bad turn. Uh, was that Tuesday night? I made a bad Whoa. turn and I felt it right away. And it was a scrimmage. It wasn't even a real game. Yeah. 
And right. I was just like, eh, fight through it. You're fine. Just exactly. keep skating. And it's like. And then you can't walk for a week. Yeah. And, and then I came yeah. home, but I was fine. And then I got, I literally walked out of the shower after playing hockey. We're Billy and Bob was like, with the concussions, Whoa! man. It's varsity Whoa! blues. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was Dude, just. Dude, I've done that. And you like finished it because you, well, especially with foot and ankle injuries with hockey, right? Everything's fine until you take the skate off. Mm -hmm. And then everything goes to shit. So it's yep. like. That's what you do. But every time in the moment, you're like, oh, it must not be that bad. <laughs> like, we're fine. Yep. We're good. Yep. And then, you know, you take the skate off. And again, sometimes, because we're also the hockey players, so I'm not saying we're rushing to the doctor. So, you know, then, yeah. like, it's literally a couple days where you're like, okay, I still can't walk. Maybe yeah. I should go get this <laughs> Yeah, I should go see someone. Like this, I should have got probably one zip. But instead, I just put a butterfly over it for a few days. And now it's kind of a lump. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, I, I actually learned that. So I, I found some, I, I got my hands on some medical glue when I was younger yeah. and I, I swear, man, I remember we, uh, I, I took right a, oh, yeah, oh, I, I oh. took a, I, in my eyebrow, uh, this one, um, nice. I took a, oh. I took a puck to the eyebrow. You can't see it. Yeah. You can't see no, it. You can barely tell. Good job. Um, but yeah, it, so I literally had to shave my eyebrow. And then I literally glued it and then just stuck it together, like held my hands like this for, yeah. you know, I don't know, a half minutes, hour. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And I was just, and I just held it there. Cause I'm like, Oh, I just make sure this works. Cause I don't want to go to the doctor. You know, like that's yep. the shit we do. We're fucking exactly. crazy. Dude. Part of what I was just trying to show this little scar, I've had it for like 15 years. I did the same thing. Like, I just glued it. I'm like, I'm not going to the yard. But I didn't even use the medical glue. I just went, I had super glue it. <laughs> My door. <laughs> but part of it is still, like, dark, like, gray. So I'm like, I wonder, because this actually happened on my car exhaust. But I only say that because I wonder if it's, like, some dirt that, like, I just went home and super glued it and didn't, like, clean it out properly. And oh. I just have a partially grayish-looking area of a scar. Like, <laughs> but, yeah, we were dumb, so... We're anyway, dumb. back to the serious issues. Like yes. Actual mental health. But, you know, that we, we we put it in, you know, light. And obviously we make, well, no, we're not making fun of it. But, you know, we crack jokes because it's a serious issue and it's uncomfortable. But there is that, too. Like, it explains it. Like, it is, that's how hockey players think. We just embodied it, right? Like, that was mm -hmm. the conversation was because that's how we think. That's how we're wired. Like, Adam can definitely speak to it. Obviously, Gold, that is um, one of the listeners, Faithfuls out there. Um, and it's, it's just the mentality you take because you know, it's a dangerous sport. Like it's one of the sports that probably has, I was thinking about this earlier, actually. I'm like, what sports could like randomly kill you the most? And there's a lot like <laughs> high lie is even probably more than hockey, but there's, yeah. you know, baseball to like the ball coming off the bat. If you're not paying attention, especially Adam Wainwright like, but, last night, right? Dude, that could easily turn different. Luckily yeah. he's like the matrix call him Neo. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Nickname. Yeah. If only he wore a wrongs glove. That's probably why it almost went through it. Anyway. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm faithful. Uh, love my job. And so uh, it, it is like where that, you know, it's just you, you accept the inherent risks of the game when you play it because you know at the end of the day, like, yeah, it could happen. Like this, this happens to me, something like this, black guy, cuts, like you were talking about, that you may need stitches for, or you may just super glue yourself. Like that happens. It happens on average, every several years, every few to several years, you know, three to five years, maybe. Um, but it happens. And, you know, I don't wear a cage. Like, I don't even wear a visor. Why? Because it only happens that often. And I'm like, whatever. Okay, so I got a black guy every four years. I can live with that. Can my wife live with that? It's probably a bigger question. Yep, so far, yep. She tolerates it? So, like, yeah. <laughs> when this happened, though, dude, she did make me buy a mouth guard. The whole, the, you know, Bill, I think is his name, Bill McKenna um his mike's yeah. dad you know um yeah. so when that happened she did make me buy a mouth guard and yep. i wore but yeah that, that was the only one i had, so, so had that, a yellow front and everybody told me i had buck teeth they said it looks oh, like nice. buck teeth. So yeah that that was the uh <laughs> that was the compromise that we came to too was i took a i took a shot uh pretty high up it's like in the cheek and it yeah. made my cheek like red for like three weeks um and we agreed. She said, I want you to wear a mouth guard. And I said, tell you what, in roller hockey, the pucks are a little different. So the agreement we made was in roller, I don't have to wear a mouth guard. But in ice, I do have to wear a mouth guard. So I'm like, okay, yeah. I can deal with that. That's fine. Yeah. 
<laughs> roller hockey pucks don't do the damage ice hockey pucks do. That's no, for sure. That is true. Yeah. I got hit in the back of the knee last night in roller. And Oof. like when it happened, I was like, this is going to be annoying. And today it's like felt fine. I'm like, all right. Oh, that's good. Hockey puck. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. If that were yeah. an ice hockey puck, you wouldn't be walking today. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I was a bit worried when it happened, but yep, we're good. Uh, so, again, you uh, kind of alluded to the Carey Price situation, but uh, Montreal Canadiens goalie Carey Price is entering the NHL, NHLPA Player Assistance Program voluntarily. Uh, the news comes a day after Canadiens head coach Dominique Ducharme uh, said it would be unlikely that Price would be ready to start the season due to an unspecified illness. Price's wife, Angela, cited mental health in an Instagram post uh, showing Price and their three kids. She said, quote, Part of the privilege of being in the position our family is in is that we also get a public platform to show how there is and can be a path for anyone who is struggling. No matter what is on the line, we hope we can communicate the importance of putting your mental health first, not just by saying it, but by showing up and doing the work to get better. Carrie showing up for himself and our family and making the best possible decision for us. It's incredibly important for us to show our kids that asking for help and letting yourself be supported by others is not just okay, but encouraged anytime and, 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 uh, sorry, and under any circumstance. Um, so not a lot to go off of it. And I don't know if you saw Mark Bergevin's, uh, press conference today, but he was tearful talking about it um so don't know what's going on i don't want to speculate um because carrie price is a stand-up human being and and oh yeah yes well i'll let you finish because i agree with that statement too yeah i'll just say that um i wish him the best and and you know bill day is a uh a, a big fan of the montreal Canadiens, and i know this this news touched him today but um yeah i I wish him nothing but the best. I hope he gets back to to playing action soon. But whenever he's ready, I feel like he's. Uh, I, I just hope he's not ever feeling forced to come back to play uh, for fans or for the management or whoever. Because uh, mental health is very important, and it's important to um, focus on yourself when you need to. Absolutely, and you just alluded to it. So that was what I thought was. Uh, it's because of his career. He is a true competitor. This is similar. So I feel like had Lundqvist not had his career end the way it did, he would have been in this situation as well. I think it is they they are such high-end competitors at the peak of their game for so long, and to never reach the one goal that they truly had, like both have gold medals, right? Um, neither have cups. And that is the end goal of any hockey player in the entire world. Uh, that wants to do it seriously as a Stanley Cup. It is above the Olympics, you know, everything. So I think that he is struggling because he knows he's at the end of his career. He knows the Montreal window was small and was delayed for too long to begin with. Um, and now is he really ready in a mental space? It's the same thing with Flurry, right? He had to take a step away before joining Chicago. It's because he's a true competitor. Same with Carey Price, same, you know, with Lundqvist, had he gone that route instead of having, you know, a terrible medical issue uh, end his career. But it was already, you know, it was with Lundqvist even, it was wishy-washy before those years. It was, how is he going to end this? And will he even get a shot at the cup, you know, um, which he didn't. Uh, but with Price, it's kind of the same thing. Like, will he ever get back there and being so close and losing it? Um I think it just took his toll because he has been the soul, well, not the soul, but he has been a main of that team for so long now and to get all the way there that entire journey another full season not like you know when the lightning won their first cup right like a full season straight through um well no it was did we play it was last year just the end of, last year was the shortened season right yeah but the year before that yeah. they also only played in was it 70 games 69 right. games yeah. something like that right so yeah okay it wasn't a full full season but still it was all the way through from when they started um, and to go through that entire journey, start to finish, I think it just weighed on him. And I'm glad, again, he's taking the time. I wish he, you know, from the organization standpoint and Bill maybe, you know, has a great perspective on this being so close to it for so long. Um, you know, I, I wish he would have addressed it a little earlier 
or or started to notice at least and have those conversations because now it's kind of close and Bergeron's in tears because uh well one he's uh you know he's he's good friends with them right and they've worked together they've been they've been a key part of Montreal for a long time together um Carey Price has done so much for the city and the team and he's one of the best goalies in the world and always will be while he's playing right so there's a lot to pack into that emotional tier right and so um of course that's going to happen and and that shows you the gravity of it right because Carey Price wouldn't do that Carey Price is a competitor he is fierce too he is like he plays kind of like I used to when I was in shape right and was actually playing where very technical but also can scramble and battle because he is that and he is of that type of mindset where you never give up you know every puck could be saved and so it's um it's sad to see this situation arise but at the same time I am glad that he's not just going to start the season right and see where it goes he could end up with a substance abuse issue out of it right and so he's right. identifying it early his wife and and family is behind him and i think that's incredibly important and again the canadians are behind him that speaks volumes to the organization which we no surprise they're the original team right so they right. should embody hockey better than everybody i guess but um it's it's one of those situations where it's sad and you just you know you pray for him and you hope that uh, no matter what he comes back stronger or if he decides to call it quits then he's he's a hall of famer in my book regardless right so, oh yeah oh, yeah you know yeah you didn't win the cup and and make your peace with that like there's everybody has to do that in their own right in certain areas of their life and this is his obviously he's he's on a global stage which makes it a lot more difficult but at least again, he's identifying it now and, and he can take the proper steps from here at whatever that is and, you know, more power to him. And, and again, I'll be praying for him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I've, there's no reason to not love Carey price, you know, unless you're maybe right. a Boston Bruins fan or a <laughs> right. Maple Leafs fan. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think that, that he's making the right decision here and I love, and like you said, I love seeing the family support from his wife, um, that's the kind of thing you want to see. And I love seeing the support from the, the Canadians. And, and you mentioned him being a future hall of famer. The fact that that guy has records for the Montreal Canadians, that's over volumes. Ken Dryden. Yeah. Yeah. Ken Dryden, Patrick Waugh. I mean, the, yeah, the Patrick, crazy wow, wow. goalies. How did I not name him too? <laughs> yeah, I'm I mean, sorry, it's, Patrick. It's I, yes, no, I really was a goalie. It's okay. It's okay. Pat, Pat listens. He's a friend, you know, he, yeah. I'm kidding. I have no idea. He's going to, he's probably never. Hey, Pat, uh, let's go blues radio. What, what the fuck's that? Um, but, but no, I, uh, I, I, I love, I love seeing the, the respect from the Canadians and the support. And I hope that's something we'll continue to see for players that need this kind of thing. And Mark Bergevin, again, you mentioned tearful, but probably because, partially for the season coming up, but right. it also makes you think a little St. Louis connection here, why they were so happy to keep Jake Allen as well. Exactly. Now Jake's going to get yeah. his chance to, to lead the Canadians to start the season at, at least yep. what we assume depending on him coming back sooner, but it does seem right. like this is Jake Allen's crease for now. So it should be interesting to see how he runs with that. Absolutely. And, um, you know, Jake always finds a way, it seems, even here in St. Louis. And we're like, oh, yep. well, looks like he's going to be a number two or a 1B. Uh, all of a sudden, he's a, a starter again for at least a little bit. And so I think he's got the chops to run with it. Montreal's a big stage, though. Um, personally, I do think he lets the media get to his head a little bit. I mean, he was there while he we does. were there. We saw that. Um, and that was where Els was such a good compliment to him because um, yep. he was so even keeled, right? So um i've said right like a million times today and i never do that. that's okay it. but anyway sidebar it's like <laughs> right. you're from minnesota minnesota right, right? oh right <laughs> anyway um so you know i think he'll get him off to a good start and it is again like the nhl uh the canadians carry price um i'm glad they're taking care of it now i'm glad they're supportive and hopefully like you said it just spreads more so it, it makes it easier for people to come forward when they're dealing with stuff so I do want to add, um, and it's funny because I know she doesn't want me to read this on air, but I'm going to do it anyway. So my mother, Mary Woodruff Ponder, is still watching. Uh, she just sent me a personal text that says, how bad is your foot? 
truth. <laughs> <laughs> Once it's not a that mom, bad. It looked it looked like it was personally taped, not professionally taped. Yeah, so it can't no, be that I bad, right? I yeah. took care of my foot. It was me. I uh, I put this on last night and I've rewrapped it a couple times. No, this is uh, my foot is fine, mom. You don't need to worry. I uh, it's just an old. This is what I was telling Jessica earlier. My wife, I said, uh, it's an old man injury. It was just one right. of those weird things where I turned the wrong way and my skate just caught the ice in a weird way. And it was just, whoop, there it is. Yep. yep that, there I'm going to feel that tomorrow. Yeah. I guarantee by Saturday or Sunday, I won't have to have it wrapped. It's anymore. even worse so when it happens to you when you're an old man in goal because it lasts like a month or two, no matter what. Oh, yeah, because then you can't play at all. You can't even skate. Well, then you do anyway, and then it lasts like eight months. But yeah. Right. It's a na- it's a nagging injury at that point. Yes. <laughs> uh, so San Jose Sharks forward Evander Kane, who has had quite the interesting summer, by the way, uh, he's being investigated by the NHL after allegedly using a fake COVID-19 vaccine card. Uh, using a fake vaccine uh, vaccination card is illegal in the United States and Canada and is against NHL rules, obviously. Uh, in the U.S., violators could face up to five years in prison or a five thousand dollar fine, which is two <laughs> extremes. <laughs> you know, Wait, like, but let's be honest, it's both as difficult for Evander Kane at this point in his life as the yes, other. Yes, yes. I mean, with everything He's a far that cry from this stack of cash in Vegas, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Those days are uh, long gone. <laughs> this M effort cannot stop fucking up. Like, I can't stand the dude. I never been able like even before he ended up in the news for all this crazy shit. Like, I can't stand him. Like he just he was one of those players that was too good to play cheap and would rather like chirp. Like he was like a Crosby that couldn't finish like Crosby can, right? So yeah. imagine a Crosby that just bitches at every you know, that's might as well be an Andrew <laughs> Shaw at that point, right? Like, what the oh, fuck? Oh yeah. So it's like oh, yeah. I just I I can't stand him because he's good and he has high end skill, but he's just a complete douche all the time. On he's and an off the ice. He's like the R. Kelly of hockey. Like, just stop <laughs> effing up, dude. Like, come on. <laughs> Maybe not that bad. That's bad. What's, given uh, that R. Kelly now has all this other stuff coming out. I'm like, trying to think of the liar, liar quote. Stop breaking the law, asshole. Oh, yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's and that's how I feel, too, because it's like I see him play and he is. So Can you make good. a not dumb decision? Yeah. Yeah. Like... Just play hockey. Go back to your house and don't do anything. Don't make do your money. Drugs. Maybe just a couple. I mean, if you have to, yeah, like, yeah. one or two. <laughs> Don't take pictures with fat stacks in Vegas, just in general. Like, I mean, if during you do that, a you're... lockout, by the way, right? Yeah, <laughs> while Jesus. yeah, complaining that the CBA needs to be redone. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. like oh, oh my god, that guy, that guy drives me nuts. And I, it's funny because we we have a, a friends of the show, uh, Teal Town USA. Uh, yeah, in my opinion, they the can't best be high sharks. on them now. No, the best part of Sharks podcast out there. And it's just like, you know, they're sitting there going, what the fuck, man? Just yeah. stop Can leaving you please your give house. Us to work with? We need 40 <laughs> goals from someone. Yeah. Joe's gone. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. The, the ancient one. Yeah, yeah the ancient right? one. Joe Thornton's gone. We're going to so bring we Jonathan Chichu back at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Marco Who Stern. also St. Louis Connection. Yep. Yeah. Peoria Rivermen. Hell yeah. Yeah. No, it's dude. It's crazy. Like everything that's come out. It's funny because every time I see his name, like pop up and trending on Twitter, I'm just like, dude, yeah, like, I don't even want to read it at this point. <laughs> Cause yeah, I but see it does. It. You're right. You are. You're like, Oh uh, yeah, that does not. Yep. Surprise I'm me. like, well, it's been about a week since I've heard from him. So yeah, that right? makes sense. <laughs> his wife had to blow him up on herself. Like how bad has it got to be when she's got to oh. do that? Right unbelievable dude just needs yeah. to stay out of trouble and it's a fake vaccine card really come on yeah. man well exactly and like that's when i read that i was like i had to double take that because i was assuming like oh coke gambling like what else is there you know like <laughs> what hasn't he done like they found what kids in his basement do? they're not his you know it's like <laughs> what's coming and then it's like a fake vaccine card <laughs> like a vander <laughs> Yeah. Especially with hell, you know man? Canada's thoughts on it are, are even more strict than here, right? So it's like, yeah, 
what happened? How have you been getting back and forth? Oh, the fake card. Never mind. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> How long did it work? Did nobody check this? He's Evander Kane, right? I don't dude, think it's tested know. every day. Yeah, no. You would think that guy's a wreck. <laughs> that guy's yeah. a wreck. And I he needs to be the next Rafi Torres, which is weird because why do the sharks keep getting all these people at the end of their careers? First and foremost, but <laughs> sorry to mean make you choke there. But like just get rid of him. The league, like Gary Bettman. Uh, all right, I don't hate you near as much as I used to. I'll admit it. I will still boo you every chance I get because it's funny and yes. like, makes sense, and you still deserve it for the lockouts and shit. But either way, oh yeah, like you did. You've been doing better with the league uh, overall and the CBAs and Olympics again. Now we're going to the Olympics again. Okay, thank you. Like give credit where credit's due. So thank you, Gary, for helping that push through. However. What the fuck over here with the Vander Kane? This is going on like five years straight now, where it's like, by the way, it was like straight from the Slava Voinov Coke deal to a Vander Kane's a wreck for the next five years. And it's like, why are we still <laughs> talking about this guy? Like, at least he's not like murdering people like Rafi Torres was trying to do on the ice, right? But like, <laughs> damn, there's the right again. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, yeah, dude, but, it's it's crazy. It 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 doesn't stop with this guy. And I yeah. I agree with you. At this point, I just want to be like, Vander, it's probably best if if you want to keep playing hockey, go no, over. Don't keep playing hockey. No. Go just, yeah. go to the KHL. They're not gonna say Yager anything. Call. To you. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, like <laughs> Yeah. It's crazy, man. The UK um, league called. They said they got plenty of room. Like yeah, right. <laughs> Japan called. They said you'll sell five tickets. Tell you what, Evander, I'll go ahead and tell you now that uh, my men's league here in St. Louis, I, I'd love to have you if you want to come nope. play hockey with us. I'll take nope. him. If I see him I'll... here, I'm going to slash him. I'll... <laughs> and I'll probably get beat up by him. Like He That's... seems pretty strong. And I'm okay with that. You're not on my team, so it's okay. Right? He's <laughs> on your team, though, so then I'm going to punch you afterwards. I'll be like, you fucker. I got you know beat what? by Evander Kane because you invited if, him. If, if Kane's scoring 20 goals a game, uh, you can go ahead and punch me. That's no, fine. dude. He's a Charlie Conway now. Oh man, he's a D five oh, Charlie Spaz, Conway. right? Spaz. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a, spaz. a Spaz. Yeah, he's a Milex <laughs> stick in ice hockey. That's right. <laughs> he's got a Chris Osgood helmet with the cat eye and everything. <laughs> uh, Mike, uh, this has this has been a lot of fun having you back. Well, it has. Kids yeah, I know it went way longer than I thought it would, but you know, I got ADD and I talk a lot, so here we are. Me too. I'm with you, man. It's funny because like all the time, like my wife and I'll, you know, we'll have our like nights out and we'll like play, we'll go to like a arcade bar or something and yeah. we'll end up just like sitting outside and talking and just be like, God, you can just fucking talk about anything. It'll just lead into the next thing and lead into the next thing. Like, and we never get to the video games again. That's and I'm just ADD. like, you're well, and I'm just like, yeah. that is ADHD. That's me. Yeah, that's yeah. what I do. So you literally need to tell me, Shut the fuck up. Let's go play video games. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Kinsley has to do that all the time. So give me a look and I'll be like, oh shit, I gotta shut up. Yep. <laughs> it's that time. It's that time. <laughs> yeah. And then you know it's the Midwest goodbye, right? So it lasts another 20 minutes anyway. Yeah, like, right. Oh shit. Yeah, it's like good, every it's single like you. minute you realize like I'm pissing her off more and more. Yep. And more. <laughs> and, but you're like, I'm trying to say goodbye though and be polite. My favorite is is when I look over at Jessica and she's doing this. Oh yeah. <laughs> And you go, well, maybe I'll fall asleep on the couch first. Yep. Plenty <laughs> good asleep before I get to the bed. That's right. That's the way to do it. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, this has been awesome. Uh, Mike, um, I know that look, you mentioned Rawlings, but, you know, anything else you want to say where people can find what you do or – uh, any social media you might want to plug, go ahead and let people know how they can find you. Yeah, no, actually, which is probably rare for your guests. But I would just <laughs> happen to be on as a guest, man, talking the blues again. It's been way too long, but, you know, I got priorities. Faith, family, work, everything else. And so I'm probably not going to be writing much about that. And if I post, it'll be on my Facebook, which is for friends anyway, obviously. So it's like, I'm not going to plug anything, but I just appreciate being here, man. It was a great conversation. I can't wait to see what the Blues do. I'm excited, even though I feel like this show was more other things than Blues, and that's probably on me. But either way, I think it was great. I'm biased, I, but I think it was a good show. That's many weeks, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's All just right. how it goes. Well, then I fit right in. Yeah, yeah you do. So you definitely do. <laughs> I appreciate you having me here, you know, and uh, I'm glad we got to catch up a little bit and share some stories about our history or our storied past really, you know? Yeah. So 
uh, just thanks again for having me, man. Yeah, man, this was great. I, um, you, you're one of the first people I always reach out to if there's ever a situation where I need a guest host. So, um, love having you, man. It was great. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad it worked out and I'll, you know, anytime you'll have me again, that it works out and we can make it happen. Let's make it happen. As long as the viewers agree. agree. They hate it. Oh me, yeah. Well, okay. I get it. We'll see. I'm not we'll that see. cool. I get it. <laughs> we'll get some reviews that are like, who the fuck is this pepping guy? Yeah, this what guy does hell? not shut the fuck up. <laughs> and he was so unprofessional in the middle. He walked into his garage and lost service. <laughs> Trust me. That is not the least professional thing we've had on this show. Fucking keyboard heroes. <laughs> Uh, well, folks, support for Let's Go Blues Radio is brought to you in part by ID Life, the world's only truly personalized vitamin platform based on a health assessment of your DNA. Visit rockinthatidlife.com for more information. That's rockinthatidlife.com and get 10% off by texting Dustin at 636 393 8745 and tell him Let's Go Blues Radio sent you. That's 636 393 8745. And if by love him, he'll give you 20%. There you go. Maybe 25 if uh, you offer something else. Uh, <laughs> who if knows? you don't know what a ZJ is, you can't afford it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we got bangers. Woo! All right. And by Center Ice Brewery, St. Louis's hockey themed brewery. Visit centericebrewery.com today to schedule a no contact curbside pickup or to make a reservation in their awesome tap room. While you're there and enjoying a number of their fantastic beers, you can admire the bar top and tables made of authentic arena wood located at 3126 Olive Street in Midtown St. Louis. It's one of the best places to watch a blues game. That's centericebrewery.com. Please drink responsibly. Uh, that will do it for episode four of season 10 of the original St. Louis Blues Hockey Podcast. Let's go Blues Radio. Thanks for listening. And thanks to those who participated in the YouTube and Facebook live chats during the show. Cheers to all of you and cheers to our podcasting audience as well. For Kurt Price and Bill Day, who are on assignment, and for my guest host, Mike Pepping, I'm Jeff Ponder, and this was Let's Go Blues Radio. Until next time, everyone, let's go blues. Blues! I love that. That's what I wanted to hear. Absolutely. All right, dude. I'm in peace so bad for like the last hour. Oh, my We're, gosh. We are still live, my friend. Oh, well, I still got to pee. Uh, yeah, just get... <laughs> Here we go. Uh, the Chiefs are at home tonight against Cyanusport at the War Memorial at 8. Good seats are still available. I'll work that sport. I think that went very well. Thank you for listening to Let's Go Blues Radio. Now take off, hosers. I want you to have a heart attack and die so that we never have to do this shit again. Well, there's 90 minutes of your life you'll never get back. Sorry. <laughs> St. Louis Blues. St. Louis Blues. Have you heard the news about our St. Louis Blues? They've only just begun, they're on their way to number one. Now there's no more blues for our St. Louis Blues.